presents College Football. places to play in all of college football. For opponents, it has been a virtual den of destruction, a valley from which few emerge with victory. For Clemson, there is no letting up, and today they're out to continue their ACC dominance of the decade and slam dance yet another opponent. times Virginia has ventured into this valley and 15 times they've been defeated. However, lately under George Welsh, the Cavs have become a legitimate conference contender. They're now four and one and their dream is to slay the Tiger in his own backyard and move in on a possible first ACC title. Today it's an ACC showdown. Virginia visits Clemson coming up next. Saturday, come on down to South Carolina and exit off Interstate 85. Then just follow the country roads and the Tiger Paws to Death Valley. On game day in Clemson, this consummate college town sees its population quadruple. They'll all walk down this hill on Spirit Weekend to get set for this ACC battle between Virginia and 15th ranked Clemson. CBS Sports welcomes you to Clemson's Memorial Stadium where today over 80,000 orange-clad fans have come out for this game between Virginia and Clemson. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. Welcome to Death Valley. We're just a couple of minutes away from seeing the most spirited entrance in all of college football. The Clemson Tigers are going to go running down this hill, but on the way, the players will stop and touch the rock for mystical and magical power they believe it gives them. It's a tradition here at Clemson. Another tradition is beating up on today's opponent, the Virginia Cavaliers. This is the most lopsided rivalry in all of college football. 28 times these two teams have met. Clemson has won all 28 ball games. In fact, it may take something mystical or magical for Virginia to win today because they are exceedingly banged up. And for more on that, I'm going to take you across the field to my partner in the booth, Pat Hayden. Pat? All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. And you were right. It's going to take some magic on, the half, on behalf of the Cavaliers. Cavaliers because George Welsh, their head coach, just told me that his starting quarterback, Sean Moore, will not play at all today. He's the guy who's led them to four straight wins. In his place will be sophomore quarterback Matt London. He is six foot seven inches tall. Now, he came to Virginia as a basketball player. Now, while and he started as a junior on the team that got to the NCAA Final Eight a year ago. Now, while he's not an inexperienced athlete, played many big basketball games, he is an inexperienced quarterback. This is his first start. He's only thrown two passes all year, but I spoke to him just a couple of moments ago, and he is remarkably composed and very excited about this game. Now, John Dockery, that is the story with the Virginia quarterback, but you're with the Clemson Tigers, you'll have a rather unusual way of getting to the stadium floor. You know, Pat, a very unusual way. You see Clemson coming out of the locker room. Now, they could have walked directly to the field, but instead they walk about 50 yards up this path. They go out these gates into two awaiting buses, which you see behind now, the buses will take them around the outside of the stadium, a very tense two and a half minutes where the magic rock and 80,000 fans awake. And Greg Gumbel, when we come back from New York, the Cavaliers and the Tigers should be ready for their rush into Death Valley. All right, Doc, thank you very much and welcome, everyone. The first order of business today, however, is Major League Baseball. Game four of the American League Championship Series taking place at the Sky Dome in Toronto, where a two-run homer by Ricky Henderson and a solo shot by Jose Canseco have the Oakland A's on top of Toronto in the fifth inning. Now, on the football, Virginia Tech not making it a very nice homecoming for West Virginia. Major Harris has thrown two interceptions. Nikki Thomas has kicked three field goals. Tech leads at 9-3 in the third quarter. Pitt's freshman quarterback,
quarterback. Alex Van Pelt has now thrown two touchdown passes. That game has moved to the fourth quarter, and the Panthers lead Temple 20-3. Auburn at Kentucky. The Wildcats had allowed just one touchdown passing coming in today. Reggie Slack has thrown two for Auburn. Here to Pedro Cherry, who escapes defenders galore and scampers down the sidelines for 36 yards and a touchdown. That put Auburn up 14-0. They lead at 14-6 in the third quarter. Syracuse has won 16 in a row in the Carrier Dome. That streak is in jeopardy this afternoon at the hands of Florida State. Dexter Carter, seven yards in the touchdown run set up by an interception. Syracuse has scored in the second quarter, but Florida State leads it by seven. Well, it's time for an update on how time flies. You may remember the soft drink commercial with Sugar Ray Leonard and his son Ray Jr. just after Dad won his 1976 Olympic gold medal. Well, Ray Jr. has blossomed into a six-foot, 160-pound tailback at Churchill High School in Maryland. And with Mom and Dad in the stands looking on last night, Ray Jr. carried the ball five times for 51 yards. And Ray Sr. says he has no regrets that his son has chosen a football career over one in the ring. I think if he got involved in boxing, it would be an unfair um, um, analysis because of his old man. I, I like what he's doing. I enjoy this. Is that football here? I think he is. I, don't, I, I would never play football. It's too dangerous. Incidentally, Ray Jr. and Churchill won easily, 34 to nothing over Rockville High. Right now, they're moving closer to kickoff in Death Valley. We'll send you back to Jim Nance and Pat Hayden and Virginia against Clemson after this message and a word from your local station. At BASF. Football 89, Sunday at 8.30 on TV7. We're back in Clemson for this game today between the Tigers and Cavaliers. Each team coming in with a 4-1 and one record on the year. Virginia has won its last four games, nine of its last ten. And here come the Cavaliers. Coach George Welch in his eighth year going for his career 100th victory today. Now the Clemson Tigers are about to emerge from the top of the hill. Let's take you there again with John Dockery. John? Jim, you said it before, probably the most dramatic entrance in college football, maybe in all of sports. The players are nervously poised. They will touch the rocket. One player told me if you're not ready at the top of the hill, you're certainly ready when you hit the bottom. Here are the Clemson Tigers! Virginia and Clemson coming up next. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. It's the Virginia Cavaliers versus the Clemson Tigers. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob Drive. Bold taste with no aftertaste. Mick Drive refreshes completely. AC Delco automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. And by Geo, get to know Geo, sold and serviced by Chevrolet Geo dealers. Just the kind of weather you might expect in Clemson, South Carolina. 80 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Very little wind. 
this, as we have mentioned, is spirit weekend. And John Dockery, you were not trampled as the players came out of the field. So, hey, tell us, uh, what is this weekend all about here? You mentioned it was spirit weekend. It was close to not getting trampled. They come flying down that hill. Interesting what Danny Ford did this week. He actually sent a letter to every member of the student body asking him Clemson re help regain the momentum that is needed to guide the Tigers to a fourth consecutive Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Danny Ford has never done anything like this before, and he couldn't have done it on a better weekend because, as you mentioned, this is Spirit Weekend, and they've given out 82,000 kazoos to the fans here today. So if you hear strange noises, it's not you and Patchum. <laughs> kick for Clemson. And Finkelston for Virginia will down it in the end zone. Bringing it out to the 20. Clemson had won the toss and deferred. Deferred, kicking to Virginia. Quarterback by Matt Blunden. He's a sophomore in football, a junior in basketball, a starter in basketball. In the backfield, Greggs and Nikki Fisher. The wide receivers, Herman Moore and Tim Finkelston. Herman Moore is the big play man. He has four touchdowns already this year. First and 10, Virginia from its own 20. Fisher on first down. Only two yards. LaVon Kirkland and Rob Bodine on the tackle for the Tigers. Rob Bodine, a former walk-on, is the nose guard. Flanked by Otis Moore and six foot seven Vance Hammond. The linebackers Brewster and Taylor. And Kirkland along with Johnson. John Johnson, fastest outside linebacker in Clemson history. Second down and eight for the Cavaliers. The pitch to Fisher. Hit initially by Arlington Nunn. And then James Lott makes the tackle. The Virginia offensive line sets up like this. Rip Leonard, a junior from Tampa, is the center. Roy Brown, all ACC guard, and Trevor Riles. And the tackles, Ray Roberts, only a sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, and Paul Collins from Richmond, Virginia, a junior. Maybe the best tight end in the ACC, Bruce McGonagall. Third down and six. London most likely will attempt his first pass. Ball is tipped. Intercepted. Intercepted by Henderson. Jerome Henderson out of bounds at the 25. Well, I'll tell you, ordinarily a quarterback who is 6'7 is not going to get too many balls tipped. But it just goes to show you when you have some real tall defensive linemen and Moore and Hammond go 6'7 and 6'4, that's going to happen. Good pass protection, a short drop, so this really shouldn't happen. It was 81 Otis Moore who got the hand there, and then Jerome Henderson, who had the receiver very well covered, even if the ball had not been tipped. But there's great speed on this Clemson defense, believe me. Jerome Henderson with the interception, a junior from Statesville, North Carolina, and the Tigers have the football on the 25 of the Cavaliers. Terry Allen on first down, picks up seven. Let's introduce you to some of the Clemson Tigers on offense. The quarterback is Chris Morocco, a senior from Athens, Georgia. In the backfield, a couple of great backs, Wesley McFadden and Terry Allen. Wide receivers, Rodney Fletcher, former junior college quarterback, and their big play man for Clemson is Gary Cooper. A gain of seven on first down. For Terry Allen, second and three. Allen again. Allen has the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 10. He got a block by Stacy Fields, the tight end. For Virginia, Ron Carey is the nose tackle. Chris Stearns, Joe Hall line up on that defensive line, along with a freshman, Chris Slade, who comes in today for the injured Donald Reynolds and Ray Savage. Linebackers Bill Thomas out of Houston, Mike Williams. First and 10 for Clemson from the 11. 
Morocco. The pitch hit immediately. Allen is hit immediately by Tyrone Lewis. He read that all the way. The sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And Jim George Welsh told us that this defense and Tyrone Lewis are going to have to keep their team in the ball game early in the game. He said we cannot let Clemson get up by 14 points in the first quarter. And to do that, the defense has to play well right here. But Clemson faces a second down and 13. Staying with Terry Allen. Allen, very little on the play. No gain. Mike Williams on the tackle for Virginia and Ron Carey. There's some good defense inside by Mike Williams, who you just mentioned, Jim. Uh, inside linebacker and Carey the nose tackle. The number 45 and number 56 inside do a great job of just stepping into the hole. That's Savage, number 56. Three or four white jerseys around the ball, and that's what it's going to take because you can't bring down Terry Allen with just one defensive player. You need two or three white jerseys around Allen all afternoon. Third and 13, Chip Davis comes in as a receiver, joining Gary Cooper. Allen out of the backfield in motion. Morocco's first pass complete at the five. That's Chip Davis, his first reception of the season. Really kind of a funny call and a funny throw on third and 13. They had no chance whatsoever, really, of that ball getting the first down. And it was actually kind of a dangerous pass, as you see Jason Wallace, I believe that is, who was injured. Wallace, one of many Virginia players injured last week in a win against William and Mary. Yeah, we talked earlier in the show about uh, Sean Moore, the quarterback, who definitely will not play. Jason Wallace has been suffered and uh, had a, a shoulder injury all season long, which has bothered him. And really, we talked about so many guys getting around the ball, but it's that time he took a hint from his own man. Inside number 92, Chris Stearns. And that's going to happen sometimes when you have a lot of team defense. Sometimes your own player is going to knock you off the player and sometimes hurt you. We talked about the Virginia injury, injury situation. More the quarterback, the guy who has led them to the four straight wins. Wilson will play. Terry Kirby, the most highly recruited back in all of America, did not even make the trip. And I think Donald Reynolds, the outside linebacker, is a real loss because Clemson likes to run the pitch to the outside. Joseph Jackson's out, and Jason Wallace, the man we just saw now, is trotting off the field. All of those players injured against William and Mary. You saw Yusef Jackson. He's one of the top tacklers. He's a linebacker for Virginia, the son of Jesse Jackson. But not dressed today because of an injury, knee injury. Gardaki will attempt a field goal on fourth and four, and he nails it for 21 yards. Chris Gardaki, one of the best in the nation. He's 10 for 11 this year. 80,000 fans here at Clemson Stadium. I just spoke to the Virginia folks about Matt Blunden, and they told me they felt they could win behind him. They also told me that they thought they had to throw the ball to beat Clemson today. Now back to Pat and Jim. So John, just to follow up on that, I was talking with Paul Collins, the starting right tackle for the Virginia Cavaliers, and he told me before the game that we can win with Matt Blunden. We have all of our offensive linemen had a lot of confidence in him, and he was remarkably composed before the game, Jim. Well, he, again, is a starter on the basketball team. He says, I'm accustomed to playing in the big game. And he was a very highly touted high school quarterback. In fact, Joe Paterno told Blunden when he was recruiting him at Penn State, you could be a starter here conceivably for the Nittany Lions for three years. Notre Dame won at Blunden. So did Stanford. Now the six foot seven quarterback is the man on the spot today for the Cavaliers. Intercepted on his first attempt. Kick, deep one. Pinkleston will not run it out. We have an update, so let's send you back to our studios in New York with Greg Gumbel. Greg? At Morgantown, Jim, can the major scramble? West Virginia down 9 nothing at one point. to Virginia Tech has scored on its first two possessions in the second half. Major Harris, 14 yards to Charlie Fedorko. The Mountaineers now lead it 10-9 in the third. Jim and Pat? All right, thank you, Greg. Major Harris right now, the best player in college football through the first half of the season. First and 10 from the 20 for Virginia. London, the give to Fisher. He'll lose a yard. Bodine, Rob Bodine, 
sophomore, played his high school football in Velva, North Dakota, about 80 miles from the Canadian border. Bodine a walk-on, but you win with guys like Rob Bodine. Clearly not the most talented guy on this defense, but he's a guy that gives you everything he has every single play. And I think if you have a guy like that in the middle of your defense, even the talented people around him raise their level of play because they see how hard he is playing. Second down and 11 after Bodine dropped him for a yard loss. Johnny Wilson's in as a receiver. London going long. Wilson's in that area. Incomplete. Double coverage by the Tigers. Arlington Nunn and Jerome Henderson. And Jim, this is something that George Wells said he wanted to do. Throw the ball deep. He said he's going to throw the ball deep at least two times a quarter, trying to get either the pass interference penalty or let Herman Moore, the tall wide receiver, go up and get it in the crowd. George Welsh has done remarkable things for Virginia before he came to the Cavaliers. This school had only two winning seasons in 29 years and no bowl appearances. Had winning years five of the last six, including two bowls. Here's the give to Derwin Greggs. And on third down, he comes up well short of the first. Robert O'Neill on the tackle, along with Dexter Davis. defensive backs from Clemson, including O'Neal, number 15, are great tacklers. They've got great foot speed, but they can really tackle you as well in the open field. Myron Martin is the punter. They use two punters for Virginia. Martin's the two-step punter. George Walsh is concerned about getting the punt blocked, so he has his two-step punter in now. Clemson's blocked three on the year. Came charging on that one. James Lott will let it bounce around for the Tigers. And the ball was down at the Clemson 29-yard line. Tigers were in there with pressure on Martin, but he got away a 46-yard punt. Now, Clemson up front, Hank Phillips is the center. His brother was an All-American here. The guards, Jeb Flesh. Boy, what a great name for an offensive lineman. <laughs> and Eric Harmon. Bruce Bratton and Stacy Long the tackles and the tight end is Stacy Fields. You mean Bruce Bratton's not a good name for an offensive lineman? I like Flesh. <laughs> First and ten. Morocco will keep it on the option. Pick up three. What you see with this Clemson offense is a team that does not make a lot of mistakes. They force you to beat them. They don't turn the ball over. Their backs do not fumble the ball. They can give you some power football. And then Morocco, the quarterback, can run the option in short yardage. And then they'll fool you, too. They'll run reverses. They'll run reverse passes. And I'm sure we'll see something like that today. Chris Morocco is in his fifth year, Pat. He waited because Rodney Williams was the man here for three years, winning his quarterback in Clemson history. Rodney Williams graduated last year. Morocco steps in. This is his year, his senior season. Second down, Morocco throwing for Cooper incomplete. A little bit behind Cooper at the 47-yard line. Coverage on the play by Keith McMeans. Some Danny Ford said coming into today's game, they have to throw the ball more. And Chris Morocco is a guy, as you said, patiently waited his turn. Could have, you know, quit, actually did, came back, went left to play baseball. But a guy who's hung in there, waited for his chance, and now he is making the most of it. And I think you have to admire guys who, like Chris, who waited around a long time for that chance. Never got discouraged. Chris actually graduated in August, He's taking graduate courses now. On third down, the pass is caught by Rodney Fletcher, and that's a first down for Clemson. Ten-yard gain to the 44-yard line. Morocco completing that pass. Here's the secondary trying to challenge Jason Wallace, Tony Covington, and the safeties Lewis and McMeans. We saw Wallace shaken up earlier. He is back in the lineup for Virginia. First and 10, Clemson from its 44. Chip Davis in as a receiver. Pitch, Terry Allen, running room. Tackled finally by Ray Savage, but he moves into Virginia territory thanks to a block by Wesley McFadden. You are going to see a lot of this pitch play that Clemson runs so well. The key blocks are by the fullback, McFadden, who makes a great block, number 22, and the tight end. Two years ago, they ran this play 20 times against the Cavaliers. And the key block is the kick-out block by the fullback, McFadden, there, who did a sensational job, former tailback, who's made the adjustment to fullback very well. 
second down and one. Give to McFadden. His first carry picks up the first down to the 42-yard line. Five-yard rush for McFadden. Cut under by Mike Williams. Boy, that is an upset in the making. Wow. Mississippi knocked off Alabama last year at the Tides place. In state. Knows about Rutgers, too. Rutgers fooled them. 88. First and 10, Clemson from the 41. Morocco throwing, running down the line and completing to Fletcher near a first down, maybe a yard short at the 32. Tony, Tony Covington on the coverage. You know, Clemson sets up that little play as well as anybody. What they will do is they'll fool you. We talk about them fooling you. They'll run the option play into the boundary a couple of times, and then they come down the line of scrimmage, fakes the option, and dump the ball to Rodney, Rodney Fletcher. And that's when the defensive back, as soon as he comes up, they dump the ball right behind him. That, that's a nice little play that Clemson has run for years under Danny Ford. We saw that baseball score, Ricky Henderson. What a series he's having. Two two-run homers today against the Blue Jays in that game. Gary Cooper in on second and one. Morocco throwing for it and getting the first down to the tight end, Stacy Fields. Stacy Fields, a converted linebacker a year ago, the tight end for Clemson. Well, you have to be happy for Stacy Fields. He is a guy who was so concerned about catching the ball coming into the first game, first game against Furman. And then the first two balls that were thrown to him, he dropped. Dre locked himself into a room after the game, didn't want to come out, but then went on to catch four balls actually in that game, but a converted uh, linebacker who was primarily a blocker. Made a nice catch in traffic for the first down there. 25-yard line of Virginia. Running it down the right line. The pitch to Allen for only a yard. Tyrone Lewis coming up from strong safety makes the tackle. Tyrone Lewis is going to have to continue to have a big day for this Cavalier defense. He is the strong safety. And when you play an option team, he has a lot of responsibility. This comes up, he can take the quarterback and sometimes, and sometimes he takes the pitch man. He's got a force on the sweep. Only 190 pounds, but he's going to be taking on big old offensive guards and tackles all afternoon. Jerome Williams in as a tight end for the Tigers. For alternating receivers, Chip Davis comes in for Cooper. Morocco on the keep. Inside of the 20, short of a first down at the 18-yard line. Now, we talked earlier about Clemson fooling you. From time to time, they like to run reverses as well in third and short situations or the option. And they'll run the reverse off the option play. Clemson, again, if you just joined us, was in this territory early after an interception, but managed just a field goal. Now third and three from the 17-yard line. And the give is to Joe Henderson, and he is tackled for a loss by Phil Thomas. Phil Thomas has had a very productive year for the Cavaliers. A walk-on from Houston. When he came to the Cavaliers, drove 26 hours in an old car from Houston, got here, walked on, has made a major contribution to this Cavalier team. They call him Tex. He's a senior, Phil Thomas. Now we're looking at Gardaki. He already hit the 21-yarder here in this quarter. This will be from 35 yards. Morocco on the hold. And Gardaki hits the upright. And it's not good. It is not good. No good. Looked like it was a high snap that got it started, really, a high snap and then a, a tough hold there. Scott Bevel on the snap, Morocco on the hold, and Gardaki rarely misses, only his second in 12 tries this year that missed. Nailing the left upright is still 3-0 Clemson. a holder for extra points and field goals, I think is the most thankless job in all of football. Chris Morocco does a great job of getting the high snap, putting it down, getting the laces turned away from the kicker, the timing was disrupted there. And again, I think it's difficult to hold him for a left-footed kicker, Jim, because you actually have to hold the ball with your left hand, and ordinarily you do it with your right hand. So that's a nice hold there by, Mar by Morocco. Virginia must feel fortunate, trailing only 3-0 here with 458 left in the first quarter. Clemson has been inside of the 20 twice and managed only a field goal. First and 10, 
Here's the carry by the fullback, Derwin Greggs. And he picks up 10 yards. Tackled by Robert O'Neill in the Clemson secondary. Now this Virginia offense believes they have to run right at the Clemson defense. They have so much speed, you can't run from sideline to sideline. If you're going to have any success, it's got to be right at them. And so you're going to see the fullback for Virginia carry the ball more than he ordinarily does. Just inches short of a first down on second and one for Virginia. Inside, first down. Greg's again on the rush. Tyrone Simpson, a freshman for Clemson on that defensive line, made the tackle, but it's first down Cavaliers. Well, ordinarily, the fullback only carries the ball about as often as you pick up a check, Jim, which is not too often. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But, but thus far, Greg's has been a factor. He's a big guy, 230 pounds, and can really move inside. That's a little shake in him, even though he's the uh, a big fullback, primarily a blocker. First and ten, play action fake to Fisher. London dumps it off. Rex can't hold on to it. Should have had it right in his hands. I'll tell you, Matt London did a nice job there, Jimmy, of moving around in the pocket for a big guy 6'7". That's a little uh, foot moving in, inside there to get the ball off to Griggs. Still looking for his first completion. London, 0 for 3 with the INT that was tipped at the line, picked off by Jerome Henderson. They're going to have to have success throwing the ball on first down. If they come up in second and long and third and long, Virginia's not going to win this football game. Finkel stun in motion on second and ten. Fisher. Only a gain of three. Tigers were there, including Eric Jeter and Dexter Davis. You know, the last time a lot of people saw this Virginia team was back in the end of August. Kickoff classic. Notre Dame stomped on them. It was 33-0 at halftime before a respectable score of 36-13 final. Since that time, upsetting 12th-ranked Penn State and all wins, four victories. Johnny Wilson comes in for the Cavaliers as a receiver on third and eight. London has his first completion. It's Bruce McGonnell. Bruce McGonagall, the tight end. Gain of 18. Well, that is a nice catch by McGonagall and a nice read by Blunden, who split out his tight end into the short side of the field. And he uses, or Virginia uses, a tight end as well as just about anybody. This is his 19th catch on the year. And he's not an ordinary tight end. He's not one of those guys who just catches those six-yard hook routes. Uh, McGonagall can get upfield. McGonagall's last 16 catches have been for a first down or a touchdown. Inside of Clemson territory, and London's going to throw again. Complete at the 35-yard line and a flag down. Finkelston on the catch. Dexter Davis was riding his back. Finkelston, another walk-on that we've talked about a little bit today. Him and George Welsh has said about Finkel said, I can't ask any more for a guy. He holds, he, he'll block, he holds for kicks and extra points. He'll block, he'll go return. down and catch the ball in a crowd, returns kickoffs and punts. And so he gave him a scholarship. One of those guys who, again, not the most talented guy in the team, but whatever he has, he's going to give you every Saturday. The interference against Clemson, no question about this. Finkelston still made the catch. Defense. First down. And he made the catch because the ball is well thrown by Blunden. Now, this ball cannot help but being caught because he throws it right at the numbers away from the defensive back. You see that defensive back's coming over the right side, so he throws it to the left side of Finkelston. It's a clever throw by Blunden. Two and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. Virginia's first drive, first big drive of the day. From the Clemson 34, Fisher. Again, Stymie hitting that wall, including Bodine and Otis Moore. Rob Bodine is kind of an unusual guy at nose tackle. Now, he's only 235 pounds, which is a little bit undersized for nose tackle. And he's unconventional in that he'll jump around guys and take a side. That time, he just threw the center, Leonard, off and made the stop. That's a nice play by Bodine. He's made several here in the opening quarter. Second and 11. Two tackles for losses by Bodine. Clemson blitzing across the middle. McGonagall 
with the reception near the first down at the 26-yard line of Clemson. Well, I love to see a team that uses the tight end because for a quarterback, it's the easiest throw. You have a guy who is 6'5 in McGonagall, and he can kind of control that middle. He's right in front of the quarterback. You have one guy who's 6'7 throwing to a 6'5 receiver, and he's got that whole middle of the defense to work. And besides that, he can run the deep routes as well as the short. McGonagall has caught at least one pass in 12 consecutive games. Clemson last year, the last team to stop it. There's a timeout on the field called by Virginia. Called by Virginia with a minute and nine seconds left in the first quarter. Virginia driving, trailing by a field goal. Again, Clemson has never lost to Virginia, 28-0. And here's what Virginia's Roy Brown said about that. Well, I think any time we play Clemson, you know, we're, we're, we want to be the first team to beat them. But, but honestly, I think, you know, we can't play as if thinking we've lost 28 times. I mean, I've only lost three times. True, my winning percentage is just as good as anybody else's. But, uh, but I think, you know, it's just you go out there and you don't play against a streak. You play against the players that are on the field. Well, it is on everyone's mind. There's Roy Brown. James Lott in the secondary for Clemson said people have been coming up to him on campus all week saying, hey, you're a senior. We've never lost to Virginia here. You don't want to go out that way. So constant reminders all week for both squads. Third and three for the Cavaliers from the Clemson 27. Clemson may have jumped. Flag is down. Marcus Wilson is stopped in the backfield. It looked like it was offside on Clemson, but clearly what we were seeing thus far in the game, that if Virginia is going to win, and there's the call against Clemson, it's going to be because of the passing. They have not been able to run for an inch, really, against this Clemson defensive front. A tremendous speed. They thought they could run at him up the middle real, with quick hitters, but even that is not working. So it's going to be on Matt Blunden. Offside defense. First down. So the drive continues after the five yard step off. Again, if you're just joining, a starting quarterback, Sean Moore, with a bruised shoulder from a week ago, is not playing. Matt Blunden is the quarterback. And Marcus Wilson, the leading rusher, is in there now. He did not start the game. He banged up. He was also banged up last week. Good fake by Blunden. Looking for more in the end zone. And it's caught. It's caught after it's batted around. McGonagall has the touchdown for Virginia. Wow. What a play. That is incredible. The alley-oop pass to Herman Moore, who just tips it. And McGonagall hustling makes the play. Six foot four. Herman Moore is known for that alley-oop play, can outleap anyone. ACC high jump champ, but this time Clemson players batting it down right into the hands of a very alert McGonagall. McInerney in for the extra point, and it's good. And here's the play. You know, Bill Oliver, the defensive backfield coach from Clemson, said when they throw the alley-oop to Moore, you got to tip the ball away. Don't go for the interception. But he didn't plan on this, because this guy's a great leaper. 7-2 he went in the ACC. Now, there's two defensive backs do a great job of ju doing just that, tipping the ball away. But it's the hustling play of McGonagall. But when you have a tight end like McGonagall, who's been getting open all day, you've got to stop him on the line of scrimmage. He's coming off much too cleanly. Put a nice little move there on the outside linebacker. But if you stop him at the line of scrimmage and, hu and hold him up, he can't make plays like that. So that's a heads-up play by McGonagall. Wow. Dexter Davis and Robert O'Neill tried to just bat it down. It's what they had been told to do all week, Pat. Just bat it down when they try that, that high alley-oop pass to Herman Moore. They did just what they were coached to do, but it turned into the touchdown to McGonagall. Herman Moore, as we look now at Danny Ford's reaction. Herman Moore scored Virginia's only touchdown last year against Clemson, and it came on an alley-oop pass play. Last minute of the first quarter, Virginia now leading. McInerney, squib kick, 
comes to Davis at the 33. He's hit from behind by one of his teammates and down at the 39-yard line. Tomorrow, CBS Sports brings you a doubleheader. NFL doubleheader getting started at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL Today. Early, most of you will see Giants in Philadelphia. Giants unbeaten on the year. Big game for the Eagles, who have dropped two in a row. There's the other regional action. Check your local listings. Late, most will see the Niners and the Saints, who desperately need a win. For Phoenix, Washington, Atlanta Rams. 12.30, it all gets started Eastern time, NFL Today. First and 10, Morocco comes back firing. Gary Cooper, first down, Clemson, Virginia 46-yard line. Every team has a big play receiver, and for Clemson, it's been Gary Cooper. 57 catches in his career. He's been averaging nearly 22 yards a reception. Didn't catch a lot of balls, but when he does, he makes the most of them. And he runs reverses, he run reverse passes as well. Gary Cooper can play. Pride of the Tigers, Gary Cooper. Picked up 16 on that reception. Morocco, good fake on the option. Gives to Henderson. Henderson cutting back. Henderson may go. He will. Touchdown, Clemson. 45 yards. What a job of cutting back. 45-yard touchdown run. Gardaki on the extra point. And it's 10-7 Clemson after one. Boy, Clemson can come after you with different types of runners. Terry Allen is a north-south runner. Joe Henderson, number 33 right here, has a little bit more move in him. He's a cutback runner. Again, he sees and feels bodies cutting, uh, uh, coming against the green, cuts back against them, and picks up a nice block for the score. So that's the end of the first quarter. Clemson 10, Virginia 7. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message in a word from your local station. So more than 40 years ago, an old coach from South Carolina College by the name of Presbyterian College, the late Lonnie McMillan, who rarely saw his team even score points when they played at Clemson. He told someone, I'm going over to Death Valley to take on the Tigers. That word got back to coach Frank Howard. And starting in the 50s, he dubbed this place Death Valley. Home of the Clemson Tigers, who lead it 10-7 after one. Scoring the touchdown on the last play of the first quarter. Gardaki will handle the kickoff chores. John Kubu had kicked the first two for Clemson. Back deep, Finkelson, David Brown, Tyrone Lewis for Virginia. Clemson going for an unprecedented four consecutive ACC titles. So we'll see if Gardaki can kick it away by Kubu. He does. Good boot. Lewis, a yard deep, will run it out. Good run to the 26-yard line. Jim, you think the option play doesn't put a linebacker in a dilemma? Watch right here as Ray Savage has the decision to make. Do I take the quarterback, Morocco, or the running back, Joe Henderson? And this is what Clemson likes to do, and what the option does is put your defensive players in a bind. And you don't even have to block the man. That's the other thing about the option. You, you don't block their best player on defense, Ray Savage, and Joe Henderson cuts back to the score. Well, I, I have to say it because Springsteen is my favorite, but Henderson attended Springsteen's high school, Freehold Borough. He showed on that run he was born to run, didn't he? <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. First and ten. Pass. Moore cannot hold on to it. Boy, he tried. He tried to bring it in three or four times, but Herman Moore just couldn't find it. You can 
see the confidence, though, in Matt London. Let's go down to John Dockery. Yeah, uh, Jim, if you, uh, during their play, as you watch the Clemson defense, watch your linebackers, because their linebacker coach, Miles Aldridge, told the linebackers to take care of the running game to free the safeties and the corners up to cover the pass. Back to you, Jim. All right, second and ten. Delay give to Greggs. Nothing. We've got an update. Again, we take it back to New York with Greg Gumbel and the update. Greg? Jim at West Virginia, Virginia Tech quarterback Cam Young takes it up top, 23 yards to Marcus Mickle. That set up the fourth field goal of the day by Mickey Thomas, and Virginia Tech is back on top of West Virginia, 12 to 10, about two minutes to play in Morgantown. Well, West Virginia, Majors brought him back. We've seen it several times this year. Can he do it again? Of course, maybe the Mountaineers still smarting from that tie last week. What a remarkable comeback by Petty a week ago. Third down, 11. He's got a man open. McGonagall was wide open. Yeah. London overthrew him. You know, John Docker's report just said watch the linebackers take away the pass, but that's what's going to happen, or take away the run. You're going to get a tight end running right down the middle, wide open, if you don't stop him from releasing. He is number 86, right in the right middle of the screen. Again, no one is touching him coming off the line. And if he isn't flushed out of the pocket, that is an easy score. You've got to stuff the tight end coming off the line of scrimmage. Byron Martin punting for the second time. Two-step punt to Lott at the 28. Lott, nice run. Skipping his way near midfield. Tackled by Kevin Cook. 20-yard return by James Lott, senior from Kannapolis, North Carolina. Well, talk about streaks. We've mentioned Clemson's dominance of Virginia. Notre Dame for years over Navy. And Penn State, Maryland. Clemson has come out with a new quarterback, Deshaun Cameron. Sophomore quarterback from LaGrange, Georgia. Takes over for Morocco on first and ten. Running the option. Cameron keeps, picks up five. Now, this is not unusual. Danny Ford had every intention of playing Deshaun Cameron early in the ballgame as a quarterback. He and Morocco uh, went into the spring drills last year and this summer, really neck and neck for the quarterback position. He gives him a little bit more speed on the perimeter of the defense and then a remarkably accurate passer this year, seven for seven coming into today's game. He threw only one pass last year, lined up in the tailback position, and threw a 79-yard touchdown pass against Duke. Here's the pitch to Allen. He has the first down. Great run by Terry Allen. Finally tackled by Ken Miles. 13 yards on the carry. And I think that's about the seventh play, seventh time they've run that sweep play thus far already, Jim. And they get a great block by the tight end, Fields, number 46, and then Allen does a nice job of just picking his way. But this offensive line from Clemson, they don't, there's no negative plays against this team because this offensive line is always moving forward. No negative plays. Really tough to get in the gaps and create negative plays. First and ten, Percy West lines up to the right. Give inside to McFadden. McFadden is blowing open some holes against Virginia. Tyrone Lewis on the tackle in the secondary, and Kevin Cook. We saw last week Auburn upset by Tennessee. The Tigers today come back and win at Kentucky. Florida State over Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. sequencing of plays this drive by the Clemson Tigers. They give you the tailback, then they give you the fullback and some option as well. Second and two, Cameron's pass caught and then dropped and almost intercepted by Covington. There he is, number five, Tony Covington. Covington, Jim, is a guy who really cares about this team. A year ago before they played Clemson, his team was two and two, wrote the team a letter that was actually read to the team in front of the team about wanting to play harder, guys needed to play harder. Then he addressed the team before last year's Clemson game. They fought him tough, ultimately lost, but he has become a leader on this Virginia defense. Says he stood up in the locker room before that Clemson game and went crazy for two or three <laughs> minutes. Third and a yard. And inside, I don't believe that Terry Allen has the first down. Miles and Savage converge. 
Danny Ford has done a remarkable job since he has been here at Clemson. Of again, of forcing teams to beat his team. His teams don't make a lot of mistakes. They not, aren't necessarily a high-scoring, flashy type of teams, but he wins with great defense and special teams. He thinks in the kicking game, there's more ways to win or lose a football game than in any other facet of the game. Now we'll face a decision here. Fourth and inches. Having missed on the last field goal attempt. He's going to go for it. And he's thinking about it again now. He has decided to take a timeout, think it over. After the summit on the sidelines, Danny Ford has sent in starting quarterback Chris Morocco, and the Tigers will go for it on fourth and inches. Not much success this year on fourth down. Allen and McFadden line up in the eye. Morocco keeps. He should have it. I like to see that on a fourth and short yardage, you go on a quick count and you run right behind a guy like Hank Phillips, the center. Low man wins in the short yardage situation, and Hank Phillips did a great job, number 50, of knocking off the nose guy. Coming right at you. Watch the center. It's a tough block for him because everybody knows he's going to come right down. He gets a block. The left guard, Flesh, gets a block. Create a little seam there for Morocco to pick up the first. Cameron comes back in at quarterback. Junior Hall is the fullback. The pitch to Allen. He fumbled. Terry Allen fumbled the football. And Virginia has recovered. <laughs> Terry Allen never fumbles the football. I say never because you go back through time, and what a remarkable record he has until now. Well, hasn't fumbled a regular season the last two years. 161 carries this year coming in. This is something that's an attitude around Clemson about carrying the ball close to your body so that you don't fumble. But he got it out a little bit and was stripped away by one of the linebackers, took a big shot. I think it was Chris Slade who reached in there and knocked it loose. But he took a pretty good hit, but it, it's amazing. Danny Ford said he's going to... We talked so much yesterday with Danny Ford and their offensive coordinator, Chuck Reedy, about the fact that they don't fumble much. Well, Clemson tailbacks had fumbled one time in their last 515 attempts prior to that one. Well, they love Terry Allen in Clemson. He's the second all-time rusher at this school and now being carted off the field. And after you see the replay, you'll understand why he fumbled. We'll bring it to you after Virginia's play on first and 10 from its own 22-yard line. Donald Bryant, Marcus Wilson in the game. Wilson alone setback. Wilson on the carry for two yards. Jim is really a high-speed impact right here between Allen and inside linebacker number 45, Mike Williams. He really went to the left knee. It wasn't anything intentional. Mm. Mm. Ouch. Second down and seven for Virginia. London rolling, now setting, firing, and almost intercepted by Dexter Davis. Well, West Virginia did not lose last year in the regular season. And now their first loss of 89, having lost, of course, in the Fiesta Bowl to Notre Dame. Major had brought them back against teams like Louisville. Well, did Alabama come roaring back or what? Down 21 nothing at one point. Well, Jim, you mentioned uh, Major Harris, but there's a guy down at Houston, Andre Ware, who's getting a lot of attention this year as well as a, a guy who's had a sensational year. Through seven touchdowns last week. Third down and seven. Pass across the middle for McGonagall, and it's tipped and intercepted. Intercepted by Robert O'Neill. He had two interceptions last week, the freshman. And now that's four on the year. 
Robert O'Neill is a true freshman and has just a presence about him. Talking to Bill Oliver, the defensive backfield coach, who says even though he's only 18 years old, he has a real feel for the game, a sense of where he is. And you're going to see some good team defense. There's a corner blitz. You see number five there on the blitz, James Lott. The ball gets tipped, and then O'Neill is there to make the play. But again, that's what quickness, team quickness on defense does. From the Virginia 37, inside McFadden. He gets near the 30. Phil Thomas and Mike Williams on the tackle. You could see on the replay where O'Neill scooped it up just before the football touched the ground. Second and four after the six-yard gain by McFadden. Allen is replaced by Joe Henderson, who has scored Clemson's touchdown here today on a 45-yard run. Morocco peeks inside of the 30 to the 28. Joe Hall wraps him up. You know, in Terry Allen's absence, Jim, they've had some pretty good backs here besides him to have been very capable running the ball. Of course, we saw Henderson and McFadden, who's playing some fullback in 1987, as a tailback rush for nearly 800 yards and now a sensational blocker as well. Third down and two for the Tigers. Fletcher in motion. Henderson lined up in the eye to give his inside to McFadden. First down. First down, Ray Savage grabbed the hold of him, but McFadden picks up the first. But Jim, did you see that line surge? This offensive line or Clemson really almost play like wishbone line when they get the rear ends real high in the air. They stay low right here. Watch these guys as they come off the line of scrimmage. There's a surge. There's no white jerseys in the gaps. There's plenty of room for the fullback and McFadden to find a, find a little seam for the first down. That's good line play. Thomas in as a receiver for Clemson on first down. The run by Henderson. Cutting around to the 20. Phil Thomas on the tackle. I'll tell you, when you played, your line had to go down like that so you could see over, right? <laughs> yeah, I, two of me would be as tall as uh, Matt Blunder. <laughs> Second down for Clemson. Thomas and Davis, the receivers, on the far right side. McFadden on the carry. McFadden for only a yard. Let's get a report from John Dockery on the sidelines. Doc? You know, Jim, we're following a Terry Allen story. They took him into the locker room. The doctors went in with him. They have a portable x-ray machine. They're x-raying him. No report as of yet. We'll keep you posted. Now he's just come out of the tunnel. He says, I don't want any help, but he needs it. And you hear the ovation in the background for Terry Allen. Well, what a big part of their offense he has been, not only just as a runner. He's thrown a couple of passes, he's caught the ball, and he is a leader on this offensive team as well. He's thrown the only touchdown pass this year for Clemson. Henderson, oh, hammered. Man. Boy, is he hit. Popped by McMeans, coming up from free safety. And he is near the first down at the 16-yard line. Well, Keith McMean said this game is the next step for us. And as a free safety, again, playing against an option team, he has got to make some plays. And, boy, he put a big hit on the ball carrier right there. Maybe another decision forthcoming from Danny Ford as the chains come out to measure. You know, because of the style of Clemson's offense, Jim, they get into, I think, more short yardage plays than most teams. They can hammer the ball and hammer the ball. They get in third and short and fourth and short an awful lot. And that's why their kicker, Gardaki, may be the most important guy on this team because they generally play a lot of close ball games just because of the style of play that they have. Clemson's most impressive victory this year was a convincing win at Florida State. The final was 34-23. Clemson led by three touchdowns at the intermission. Fourth down. They'll go for it again. Same call, same result. First down, Clemson. 
go back down to John Dockery on the sidelines. Doc? She might have known if you can see behind me, but Terry Allen's knee is being wrapped with an ace bandage. They had ice on it. I spoke to him briefly. He said he was in pain, but that he expected he'd be back. I'm not so sure about, though. The sprain is uh, not serious as they think right now, but I can't see him coming back for a while. But that's just a subjective opinion on my part, having seen a lot of knees, Jim. Terry, as I said, thinks he may be back. Back to you. Okay, you would never know he'd even be able to come back out after seeing the replay. Gruesome hit. Morocco sneak sets up first down, but busted play. Flags are down. Well, Hank Phillips, the center for Clemson, did a nice thing. As soon as he sees the defensive team jump offside, he snaps the ball. Sometimes your quarterback can break a few fingers like that. But a nice heads-up play by Hank Phillips, the center. You ought to be able to give him five yards rushing or something. You know, give, him, <laughs> give him some yardage credit. You know, every offensive lineman wants a chance to play tailback or quarterback, but this offensive line for Clemson is a very close-knit group. You know, every Friday, they get together and kick practice field goals out there, and not too many of them can get the ball off the ground, but Jeb Flesh, the left guard, can actually uh, kick a 55-yarder last Friday when they were messing around on Friday. Can you imagine that? Good guard. So after the five-yard step off, Morocco late pitch, Henderson holds on, touchdown. Hold on a minute, flag down. Maybe it was a forward lateral. Bringing it back. That's the call. As exciting as it was, Henderson looking for it and grabbing it eventually, it won't count. Yeah, I mean, this is something Joe Henderson, again, has got to stay back be behind the Illegal forward pass. Loss of down, second down. And that's a nice call by the side judge because Henderson overran the option play. You have to be a little bit patient when you're trailing on the option play. What you got? So, loss of down. Second and eight. Morocco going. Touchdown, Cooper. Gary Cooper. Morocco's first touchdown pass of the season. his career as well. Gardaki, oh. good on the extra point. Well, tremendous sequencing of plays by Clemson. They hammer the ball with you, and then they run the option play, and then they fake the option, and when the safety comes up, which he has to do to support the play, they throw the ball right where the safety ordinarily would be. And Gary Cooper in the slot made a nice little catch for the touchdown, but nice sequencing of plays by the Clemson Tigers for the score. And they're up by 10. You know, the... The play-action fake is one of those subtle things that can help a team win. Watch the free safety right here, number 16, Keith McMeans. Go for the play-action face. He's up here. Gary Cooper, the slot man, then goes right in the area where he vacated. And again, we talk about setting plays up. You run the option, you run the fullback, the free safety comes up to make the play, and then you throw it right in behind him. That is nice play selection by Chuck Reedy, the offensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers. Gary Cooper has his second touchdown on the season. Halfway through the second quarter, Clemson by 10. Chris Gardaki will kick away. After what you told me about Jeb Flesh, I'd like to see the big uh, guard come out there. I was reminded, by the way, that Luke Rosa is an offensive lineman and kicker. The toe. The big toe. The toe. Picking it up at the goal line. Fisher to the 21-yard line. The ACC standings look like this. NC State playing a lot of conference games early. Virginia unbeaten in conference play. And Clemson with the loss last week against Duke.
Duke beat them 21-17. In fact, after the game, Coach Steve Spurrier of Duke took out an ad in the local Durham newspaper and thanked all of the Duke partisans for coming out and helping his team in the rain beat Clemson. Good play jab. Blunden rolling right again and looking long for Herman Moore. Moore at the 30 and down at the 27-yard line. Just had one man on him, Robert O'Neill, and it picked up 51 yards. Well, he does not look like a basketball player throwing the football, does uh, Matt London? Great arm. That ball was a frozen rope right on it. And again, George Wells said we must throw the ball deep against this Clemson secretary, hoping for a pass interference or the big play like that. That was beautifully thrown over the defensive back O'Neill and the nice catch by Moore. Spotting it at the 29-yard line of Clemson. Fisher, the tailback, out of the eye. London. Pitches. No game. Fisher. Tackled by LeVon Kirkland and Robert O'Neill. Now this kind of play really doesn't fool uh, a team that plays, uh, that runs the option. They practice against it every week. Now, London has several different options. He can throw the ball downfield. He can run it himself. But when he sees that many orange jerseys, he necessarily... Put pitches it there to Nicky Fisher, but look, he got six or seven orange jerseys around the ball. Poised quarterback, Matt Blunden. Second and ten, he's facing from the Clemson 29. McGonagall across the middle. Pick up of eight. Jim, leave him third and two, Pat. Bruce McGonagall may catch 20 balls today if somebody doesn't slow him up off the line of scrimmage. And again, it's a pretty simple thing. You get your strong side linebacker right on top of him and just don't make it easy for him. He already has McGonagall. Four receptions, 56 yards, and the Virginia touchdown. He led Virginia last year in receiving yards, which is a great accomplishment when you have Herman Moore and John Ford, a second-round NFL pick. Very important third down here for the Cavaliers. Third and three. Fisher stepping through and picking it up. O'Neal and Locke bring him down, but Fisher sidestepping his way for the first down. For well, Nicky Fisher, that was one of the first positive runs that they have had, but Nicky Fisher has been waiting for his chance. A highly recruited player two years ago, was recruited by everybody, but claim came to Virginia because he thought he could be the, the star in the backfield, thought he could dominate as a runner. And when he's gotten his opportunity, he's played pretty well. Started three games last year, ran for two, uh, two times over 100 yards. Virginia jumps. Well, the other interesting thing, Jim, about Nicky Fisher, he was actually had applied for a redshirt year this year. Just prior to last yeah. week's game against William & Mary, he was so disappointed with his playing time. He didn't want to, but he was finally convinced to take a redshirt year. We had two tailbacks ahead of him, and uh, Marcus Wilson and Terry One. Kirby at the time, and he actually had all the paperwork to redshirt this year, and then when Kirby and Marcus Wilson got hurt last week, he rushed seven times for 42 yards and lost the redshirt year. Been out because of an Achilles tendon problem. Some had said he had gout in the Achilles. First and 15, Fisher the tailback. He'll run it. Not for much. Vince Taylor on the tackle, helped out by Doug Brewster. It, it is just so diff, uh, so difficult to run to the outside of this Clemson defense. They've had, always had more physical defenses than they have this year, but they have got tremendous speed on those guys. And again, you're going to see four, five, six orange jerseys around the ball, particularly when you go outside. Yeah, they lost Donnell Wolford, a first-rounder, to the Bears. Terry Kennard was a secondary man for Clemson. Second and 15. London looking long in the end zone. Moore cannot come down with it. That's the kind of pass he likes. Up high to try to take advantage of his six foot four frame and jumping ability. Where was McGonagall there? Last time he tipped it to McGonagall. But again, that's the idea, is just to give Herman Moore a chance. But good defense with two defensive backs around Herman Moore. The last, the last part of the play, throw it up high and let him try to go up and get it. He gets a, got a pretty good hand on it, but then it was 36, Jerome Henderson, who did a great job of knocking the ball out of Moore's hands. Third and 
and 15. Derek Dooley's in the game along with Johnny Wilson. Finkelstein in motion. Three receiver set for the Cavs. London going for McGonagall. Almost, but incomplete. Well, they finally put somebody on Bruce McGonagall's nose because he's been running off free, and then James Lott, number five, made a nice play. Here, that, that time, that was the first time they'd actually contested McGonagall, and that was number 12, John Johnson, who gave him a little bit of a push, and that allowed James Lott, the free safety, to come over and make the play. And if he doesn't tie him up, he runs free down the sideline. Riles on the snap, Finkelston on the hold, McInerney with a 36-yard attempt would be the longest of his career. And he's got it. So, the Cavs move within a touchdown. We'll be back with more CFA College football in just a moment. Well, the Cavaliers are jumping up in the air. They like the way it has started for this team that came in with so many injuries. Trailing only 17-10. kicks Michael Husted for Virginia. He drives Henderson into the end zone and through the end zone. Touchback. At the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College football broadcast, we will, as always, select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Clemson Tigers have been ranked in the Associated Press poll 40 straight college football weeks. A week ago, they were 7th, slipped from 7th to 15th after the loss to Duke. And now the Tigers take over at their own 20. This is their worst starting field position of the day. Morocco is the quarterback. He has three receivers in the game with him. Running the option, Henderson to pitch. Ray Savage. We talked about Jeb Flesh being a good name for a football player for his position. How about a linebacker with the name Savage? That is perfect. And he wants to be remembered as the greatest defensive player that ever has played at Virginia. He's a guy who's got immense talent and ability. He can rush the passer. He can play the tight end. He can play back and pass coverage. A very talented outside linebacker. Already in on seven tackles. That one a two-yard loss on the tackle by Savage. Morocco will run with it. And out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Savage again pushes him out. And Jim, that doesn't look like a, a huge gainer. He only gained five, six yards. But what he didn't do was force the ball. Chris Morocco knows what his role is on this team. It's not necessarily to carry this football team with his right arm, but it's to make the right decisions. And that was the right one there, not forcing the ball and just taking the five or six yard game by running it. Chris Morocco had battled in camp with Cameron for the starting position and was not notified he was the starter until after he had raced down the hill in the opener against Furman. Just seconds before the kick, Danny Ford said, you're my quarterback. Here he is, Morocco. Complete to Cooper. Makes a little pivot, picks up the first. Ball is loose after the play is whistled dead. Tyrone Lewis running with it. Morocco, we mentioned, waited a long time, backing up Rodney Williams. Here's what he talked about with the weight. That's one thing I think that I learned from not playing. You know, you always heard, I always remember playing, I'll go out and have fun, but it was almost like it was a job to you. But then when I sat for four years and you say how much you've missed out on and finally when you get the chance, I do it. And that's why I try to remind myself every once in a while this is just fun and I should go out there and try to enjoy it. It's my, it's my last year of playing and something that I've done all my life. He's hit on seven of his last eight passes. That's having fun. And now he's throwing again and it's batted down. Ron Carey got his hands on it. What a nice play by Ron Carey, the nose tackle. And he was kind of in a reposition, almost really there in pass coverage. Saw that he wasn't going to get back, just stood there, and then jumped up and made the play. He'll be right in front of you, number 90. He sees that he can't get to the quarterback, fights off a couple of guys, waves those big paws. <laughs> Wasn't really a, a tremendous leap, though, was it? <laughs> there are a lot of big paws around Clemson territory. Every road, every building, you see those tiger paws. Those were the paws of Virginia's Ron Carey. 
Morocco now thinking of going long. Instead, swings it to Henderson. Henderson gets away from two tackles and is down at the 31-yard line. 36 yards. Boy, isn't that a nice play by Chris Morocco? And again, a guy you have to admire who's fought through some adversity here. He was trying to first throw the ball downfield to Gary Cooper for the big play. But Cooper was taken away. He kind of changed his throw in midstream. And then nice touch dumped the ball off to Henderson. And that looks like an easy throw, but believe me, it's not. You have to throw it over a couple of bodies. You have to have touch on the ball. That's a nice little throw by Morocco. We're inside of two minutes left in the half. Clemson with two timeouts and a seven-point lead. McFadden. Gain of three. Bunched up by Savage and company. What Clemson does a great job of in this part of the game is use a lot of the clock, as much of the clock, and then still get something on the board. You've seen them do that time after time after time. A minute 21 remaining in the half. They'll use just about that whole time and then get something on the board. They brought in another tailback. Charlie James is in. Lined up deep in the eye behind McFadden and Morocco. Here's the reverse, the end around to Cooper. And read all the way by Tyrone Lewis. Tyrone Lewis saved a very big play, maybe a touchdown there, because they had a nicely set up the reverse to Cooper. So instead, it's a loss of four. Clemson in Virginia territory, final minute of the first half. I used pressure. I still have $800 in water damage. How come? Even treated wood needs Thompson's water seal protection. This patio was supposed to last for years. Now I have $1,200 in damage. Why? Your concrete wasn't protected with Thompson's water seal. Thompson's penetrates into wood, brick, or concrete to form a barrier water can't get past, even when driven by 98-mile-per-hour winds. Let it rain. This time I use Thompson's, a great defense against repair expense. Thompson's, the first name in lasting protection. What a play by Tyrone Lewis right here, the strong safety who stays at home when the reverse comes around. If, if he doesn't do his job and he gets fooled by the fake, this could be a touchdown by Gary Cooper. Because you see some linemen, two or three linemen out in front. They had the whole thing set up, but Tyrone Lewis did a great job of preventing a big play. Just a sophomore. I like what he said, Tyrone Lewis, when he described his own play. He said, last year I was a puppy. Now I'm a German Shepherd, but I want to be a wolf. <laughs> Third down, 11. Morocco's pass almost intercepted. Close to Savage. In the area was Stacy Fields, the tight end. And Savage actually tipped that ball. Again, a heads-up play there by Savage. It present, prevented a, probably a 12 or 15-yard Yard gain. So Gardaki comes in. His career long is 52 yards. This is a 48-yard attempt. One for two today. Good from 21. Did the upright from 35. This is blocked. Goes through the end zone. Virginia got a hand on it. Yeah, it looked like it was tipped. Came from their left side of the defense. Is it Tyrone Lewis again? Keep an eye on number nine. Right off the corner. Again, this is just, all this is his hustle. Gets the right hand out. Looked like he tipped it right there. May have just grazed the bottom of his right hand. Well, I'd say that's such a long way to go from the corner. And all it is is just guts and determination. And again, Tyrone Lewis has done it twice now for the Cavaliers. First and 10, Virginia, 40 seconds left in the half. London keeps on firing, and that one right in the area of three defenders. Johnny Wilson, the intended receiver. Dexter Davis was close to it, though, for Clemson. Let's go down to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Jim. George Wilson, his eighth year, has done a remarkable job here at Virginia. Uh, the team now respectable, credible, not like the old days when there were embarrassments, like in 1959 when Virginia went to play Duke. Only problem was Duke was playing Notre Dame that day. <laughs> so Virginia had to hustle across and get down to North Carolina, only to lose that game 41 to nothing. A big difference here today. Not good preparation that way. Again, Welsh today after his 100th career win. Mm. Ricks. 
Virginia will just let it run down here at the end of the first half. I think George Welsh has to be happy going down only by seven points at halftime considering the injuries that he's had. His offensive team has had a couple of turnovers but still played well. And the defense at times has had its moments too. Coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa fill you in on everything that's happening in college football. Virginia will not even have to run another play. That's the end of the first half with the score. Clemson 17, Virginia 10. Now we'll go back to our New York studios with Greg Gumbel hosting the College Football Report. And the story today, the upset of the day, Virginia Tech over West Virginia. Greg? All right, Jim, thank you, and welcome back, everyone, to our studios here in New York. Coming up, scores and highlights from across the country, yes, including the upset of the day. Unranked Virginia Tech over number nine, West Virginia. That does indeed spoil the Mountaineers' homecoming. Stay with us. The Prudential College Football Report continues on CBS after this message and a word from your local station. Well, the first half certainly had its share of memorable plays. Joe Henderson running 45 yards for a touchdown for Clemson. McGonigal's touchdown catch for Virginia off a deflection. Touchdown pass from Morocco to Cooper. It adds up to a 17-10 lead as you're looking at Matt Blunden, quarterback for Virginia. John Dockery spoke with Coach George Welsh just moments ago coming out of the locker room. Coach, could you evaluate Matt Blunden's performance in the first half? Well, I think he's doing all right. I think there's a couple of the passes he's not throwing very well, so we're not going to call him in the second half. But I think he's, has a, he's played with a lot of poise. Not great execution, but a lot of poise. What about the second half? You haven't been able to run the ball much. Do you abandon the run game and go just to the pass game? No, no. We have to run the ball some to beat Clemson. It's always that way. So we're going to try a couple other things we haven't used in the first half. Good luck, Coach. And here he is, Matt Blunden on the sidelines, warming up his numbers from the first half. And George Wells said some of the throws he wasn't throwing particularly well, and it seemed like a corner routes, the outside routes, but throwing the ball over the middle, I thought he was pretty uh, effective. I thought he started to pick up his confidence, and again, his two interceptions coming off deflections. Houston kicks for the Cavs into the back of the end zone. Henderson will down it on a knee. The numbers game from the first half. Some of the key ones we have for you. Time of possession belonging to the Tigers. There's Virginia. the big one, I think. Yeah. yeah, they're rushing 35 yards, just Virginia. Close to the passing yards, but... Virginia, if they are going to run the football, and George Wells said they're going to, I think it's going to have to be like draw plays and such because they had no success with power runs. With Allen injured, Henderson is the tailback. And he gets the carry. Changing direction. And he's still on his feet. That's as good a 16-yard run as I've ever seen. I mean, he must have danced his way, Pat, around six or seven defenders. Well, he's got that ability to make you miss. And the first guy who had a shot on is number seven, Jason Wallace, who I thought was going to get him for a loss in the backfield. Again, he faked inside, went right back out. He kind of hops along with both of those feet. Sometimes both feet are in the air together. But he's got great vision, can follow some blocks, and then strong enough to run through some tacklers, some arm tackles. I counted six guys. He hopscotched around on that run to give him 17 yards. First and 10, Clemson. Running to the short side of the field is no room at all for Henderson, and it's a loss. Covington on the tackle. We go to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Jim. Joe Henderson may be making, uh, taking up some of the slack for uh, Terry Allen, who is still in the locker room. He hasn't come out yet, and the uh, report is this, that he has a ligament problem, he'll be reevaluated, and he will not be back today. So we won't see him again today. Back to you, Jim. It won't feel any better tomorrow morning, either. That knee for Allen. Second down and 12. Henderson coming out in motion. Morocco has to tuck it under, and he'll lose a yard. Slade on the tackle, Chris Slade. We talked about this offensive line of Clemson doing such a nice job, and they, they've been able to run the ball virtually everywhere they've wanted. They've had more success on the right side behind Harmon and Long, but that whole offensive line is just in a real nice job of getting off very quickly, staying low. 
they take very large line splits. You'll, you'll notice they take big line splits, and you have to have a lot of confidence in your offensive line to be able to do that because it creates gaps for defensive players to shoot through. Fletcher to the left, Cooper to the top of your screen, third and 12. Morocco with all kinds of time has has Fields, the tight end, but that's not the yardage needed for the first down. Well short of the first down yardage. Well, the Virginia defense did their job, Jim, and I think, again, the defensive tone is set for a game or the second half when you come out in that first series. They forced the Clemson punt, and they're going to give the offense and Matt Blunden a chance to, to tie the ball game. Finkelston, the return man. Dardaki not only plays kicks, but punts. Puts his left foot to it. Sailing kick called for the fair catch by Finkelstun. And the ball was at the 25-yard line. A reminder, tomorrow, NFL doubleheader. Giants and Eagles early. Giants 4-0, Philadelphia 2-2. Two two. The Bears at the Bucks. Dallas at Green Bay. Steve Walsh's first start. Detroit and Minnesota. And then later in the day, most of you will see in the late game, 49ers against the Saints. Others will watch the Cards and Redskins. Or the Falcons-Rams. Rams already having beaten the Falcons on opening week. Well, Deion Sanders, I think, is going to play a lot for that cornerback for the Falcons this week, Jim. Remember, he ran that punt back against the Rams. London play action fake. Herman Moore is open by 15 yards. 75-yard touchdown. second half with a little play action fake and let your big time receiver Herman Moore run the post route. McInerney can tie the game with the point after. The game is tied at 17. First play from scrimmage in the second half. Jim, this really should not happen when a free safety is supposed to take these kinds of routes away, the post pattern. But I think with a play action fake, the free safety came up, and that allowed Herman Moore to be wide open for an easy 75-yard score. It took him 12 seconds in the second half. That's Raj, and it's tied. Herman Moore has tied the game, his fifth touchdown of the season. He talked with us about the new tradition at Virginia, winning. Traditional Virginia, we're starting to get away from it, where they are just a mediocre team, or if they win, they won because the other team played poorly. But now we're starting to be recognized, I think, as a team that plays to their potential, a team that has talented athletes, a team that has good recruits and goes out of their way to get the good recruits around the country. So. It feels good to be on that ground part of it, the base of what's starting to become something that's good here. It was the longest play of the year for Virginia and the longest play allowed by the Clemson defense since 1987, two seasons. A's are up, A's over the J's, 6-5. Now three games to one advantage for Oakland. Houston. Picking chores. Doug Thomas will not run it out. You know, Jim, we have seen both safeties and both teams get fooled on play action. In fact, watch both of these guys come up as Herman Moore runs the post pattern behind them. And again, it's the good fake by Blunden. They fake actually the tailback, then they fake the reverse up. Both safeties step up, and Herman Moore is there for an easy, easy score. Again, the play-action fake where the safeties are getting too aggressive trying to make the stop at the line of scrimmage. You know, George Welsh, when we visited with him this week in Charlottesville, felt like he could cross up that Clemson defense and go long on him. And he has. Pass to McFadden for a short yardage. A flag is down. But you're right, Jim. You know, George Welsh said that they need to throw the ball deep at least two times a, corn a quarter because he felt sometimes the Clemson defensive backs got confused because they ran so many different coverages, and he thought he had some athletes, particularly Herman Moore, who could get downfield and make some plays. Moore had a 50-yard... receiver, downfield offense. Moore had a 50-yard reception. 
in the second quarter to set up a field goal. And then the 75-yard touchdown strike. You know, the one thing about this Clemson team, though, when you think about it, they lost last week to a passing team. Because they don't throw the ball a lot, they don't see it much in practice. So if they're vulnerable at all, I think it's to passing teams. They were last week against Duke. We've seen it a couple times today. North Carolina State a little later in the year. The ACC is a very good passing team with quarterback Shane Montgomery. George Welsh was a quarterback when he played at Navy. You saw the graphic, 1955. He led the nation in total offense. Fletcher on the reception. Jukes one tackle and steps out for a 10-yard gain. Talking about some of the scores today. Well, a little early <laughs> on the West Coast. Dennis Green out there in his first year as the head coach of Stanford. Craig Harrison injured it as the Miami quarterback. Will not play today, will not play for three or four weeks. Colorado and Nebraska headed for a duel November 4th in Boulder. It will be for the Big A crown. Second down and three, actually a 12-yard pickup on the pass play to Fletcher. Henderson near the first down at the 30. Three-yard pickup, Ron Carey collides with him at the 30. And we talked about line splits a little bit earlier in this offensive line of Clemson. And, and what they do is create a lot of creases for guys like Joe Henderson and Terry Allen and Wesley McFadden to run behind when you have those big line splits. But most offensive lines don't have the courage to do that because you create huge gaps that defensive players can shoot through. But again, this Clemson line has the kind of ability to be able to do that. You can see the splits, third and one, Morocco sneaks. The play has worked a couple of times today, and it, I believe it does again for the first down. And, and Jim, you know, every time, it's one of those subtle little things, every time he's gone to a quick count, before the defense has gotten settled. And that's just one of those small little things that help you win football games. You, you get your guys set, you get off quickly before the defense is ready, and before you know it, you have a first down. Morocco carries a golf handicap that matches his jersey number. He teams every Sunday with Rodney Williams, last year's quarterback. They go against the Clemson golf team with shots, I might add. With the U.S. Amateur Champion playing down here, Chris Patton. Henderson on first down over the 35-yard line. Clemson staying with Henderson. He's backed up by Charlie James and Terry Allen out of the game. Yeah, Terry Allen is out of the game, but they can come at you with Henderson, who we see being able to make a lot of guys miss. And they have Charlie James, number 43, who will come in later, and he has got tremendous speed to go the distance. Henderson, eight carries for 69 yards and a touchdown. Second down and five. McFadden up the middle and about a yard short, setting up third in a yard. Tackle by Billy Keyes and Ray Savage. Now, Jim, one of the reasons that Clemson tailbacks and fullbacks have been so successful over the years is they get great blocking from their wide receivers. That time, Chip Davis and Rodney Fletcher both split out wide, clearly blocked, knocked their defensive backs on the ground, on their backs. The best blocking wide receivers in the country come from Clemson. They know when they come here, they've got to block first. Third and one. The give, McFadden, second effort, has the first down. Ray Savage on his back. Talk about personality. This is all, all the way on the other side of the field, but watch, this is number 25, Gary Cooper. Watch how he's going to be. They're a blocker first. They spend as much time in practice on their blocking schemes as they do catching the football. You know that when you come here, as a matter of fact, all three wide receivers came here in different positions, two as quarterbacks and one as a defensive back. First and ten for Clemson. Morocco throwing down the line, trying to hit Cooper on the slant. He may have gone a long way with that one. The pass was a little low. That was good night, Irene, if that ball is thrown a little bit higher. We were talking to Morocco about how would this team bounce back from the loss against Duke. He said, you know, the last three years, Clemson has had unexpected losses to North Carolina State and still gone on to ACC championships. And he expects that this team is capable going 
on to its fourth successive ACC crown. We're at Death Valley, a tie game in the third quarter. Morocco under pressure, looking for Fletcher. Should have been caught. Fletcher, I believe, mistimed that one, Pat. Joe Hall was in the face of Morocco. Fletcher was all alone on the right sideline. Well, he was wide open, but Morocco did get hammered by Joe Hall, number 78. But the play was set up beautifully. Fletcher had run inside routes all day. This time he runs to the corner. But I think number 70, Joe Hall, got into Morocco's uh, uh, follow-through, and the ball was a little bit wide for Fletcher. Third and 10. 9.55 left in the third quarter. Henderson goes out of there in motion. Morocco hits Fletcher for the first down in Virginia territory at the 39-yard line. A gain of 18. I love to see that, Jim, when a guy comes right back to a receiver who may have just dropped the ball for you. Just wonderful confidence for a guy like Rodney Fletcher. Good protection here. One of the few straight dropbacks we've seen from Clemson thus far today. Most of them come off of play action passes. But that time he runs a square in route. And what Fletcher has done, Jim, is set up a defensive back. He runs the corner route, he'll run the hook route, and that time he ran the square in. From the 39, McFadden for four. McFadden had Chris Slade tackle him. Slade, number 85, on his feet. Yeah, they play overtime up that way in the Yankee Conference, Villanova, and Connecticut. We're tied here. The only difference, no OT. Should we need it? They don't have it, of course. Second down play, McFadden. Just short yardage. How about the play today of Chris Slade? He has stepped in for Donald Reynolds. Slade, a high school teammate of the much-publicized Terry Kirby. What do you think, Pat? Well, they think Slade, he is a freshman, a true freshman as well. They think ultimately he is going to be a very good football player. They were concerned about him today. He's only 212 pounds playing outside linebacker. And they thought they were concerned because Clemson runs so many pitch plays where he has to take on the tight end. And he's had mixed success thus far today doing that. Well, it's his first start. He's been in on the last couple of tackles. Third and five for Clemson. And McFadden picks up the first down. Scoots his way to the 28-yard line. As well as these running backs are running, you don't... But watch Jeb Flesh, number 59. He's going to make lead the way. He clears the way right of the linebacker, Williams. That's just what I was going to say. You don't see many white jerseys slowing the running backs near the line of scrimmage. It's always two or three or four yards downfield before you see a defensive player around a running back. Stacy Fields pushed the guy out of there as well. A good block. Junior Hall lines up as the fullback for Clemson on first and ten. Sweep with Henderson. Collard from behind by Kevin Cook. Rodney Fletcher was out there trying to give him some more room. The start block, we just talked a moment ago about Chris Slade, and he had to stop the pitch play, the most dangerous play in their arsenal. He has to do is fight off the block of Fields, number 46. See, Fields is doing a nice job. He's not allowing Slade really to get into the play. By that time, the, the running back, Henderson, is already by him. That was the concern they had with the freshman, how he'd get tied up with the tight end fields. Second down and five. Charlie James is the tailback. McFadden, the fullback, gets the rush. Billy Keyes brought him down from behind, near the first down, inside of the 20. Uh, Danny Ford said this week about Wesley McFadden, I've never had a guy I've respected more. He plays hard, you don't, he doesn't talk much when he's not supposed to, but he gives you everything he has. Never complained when he was moved from a star tailback to the fullback position. The best fullback he's ever had. We're at Death Valley, one of the great scenes in all of college football. And the home team, Clemson Tigers, on a drive, the 15th play of the drive, tied with Virginia. It's Wesley McFadden is getting a lot of work on this series. 
Pat, you just spoke of him. He's done just a, a great job of making people miss in a short area. It's much easier to do that, Jim, when you're a tailback lined up seven yards deep. When you're a fullback and you're three or four yards away from the line of scrimmage, it's a lot harder to make people miss, but yet McFadden has been able to do that today. Give the Cardinal another field goal against Notre Dame. 6 nothing Stanford. First and 10, James for four yards at the 11. McMeans comes up. Charlie James is a guy, when he's had an opportunity to play for Clemson, he has played very well. An all ACC track performer, fastest guy in the team, even though he weighs 210 pounds. Henderson comes in, replaces him. George Welsh watching Clemson really use the clock. And what a possession this has been for Clemson. Over seven minutes. McFadden to the eight. Terry Allen went out with the knee in the first half. Second quarter injury was carted to the locker room, then limped back onto the field to the roar of the crowd and sat on the bench. Here you see the numbers, including Allen. Very important down to the Cavalier defense, trying to stop this drive and force the field goal, third and four. Henderson the tailback. Morocco running the option, he'll keep it. Puts his head down, falls in, touchdown. That's just hard-nosed, tough Clemson football. and scores, anything's liable to happen. Okay, Tiger Man, do your thing. This is a tiger carrying a dozen roses. Orange, of course, in. And Mickey Berman, do you have something to ask Susan Peace? Yes, I would. If she'd stand up here, please. I'd like to ask her to marry me. I got something I want to put on her finger right here. <laughs> Get a look. Well, Susan, what's the answer? and turned it over. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love it. How about second half time of possession? Ordinarily, time of possession only matters if you're in jail. But right there, it's, it's incredible. Even this half. 12 seconds to 9.58, and it's still an exchange of touchdowns in the second half. Finkelson. Gardaki scored first after an interception by Henderson. Three nothing Clemson. Virginia scored on a tip ball. McGonagall, the man on the spot, picks it up for the touchdown. Henderson, 45-yard run, and then Cooper in a 17-7. Virginia comes back. More here in the third quarter, and now Morocco. It's advantage Clemson. 4:44 left in the third. Erwin Griggs. Griggs, a senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Tackled by John Johnson. 
You know, unlike the Clemson offense, this Virginia offense really has been one that's come up with big plays. They've not been able to sustain really long drives. And again, I think it's going to come down to Matt London in the passing game if they can match scores with Clemson. Second and five. On the delay, Fisher. Hit by Vince Taylor first. Mm, just past the 30-yard line, near a first down. It's one of the few draw plays that Virginia has run, and they ran that one with some success, Jim. And it's a good call when you're throwing the ball as often and as well as Virginia is. They've had no success with power football. But that was one of the few draws we have seen the Cavaliers run. Looking at Nikki Fisher, sophomore from Martinsville, Virginia. Played with Sean Moore, the injured quarterback, in high school. And he really thought that he's been overlooked here, Jim. He thinks that he can play and play well for the Cavaliers. And he thinks this is a real opportunity for him today. What was it he said this week? A lot of people have totally forgotten what I can do. I want to show them. First down for Virginia. London has it, looking for more. Double team by O'Neal and Henderson. They had Herman Moore sandwiched. You know, they always ask Herman Moore, are you guys, you and Sean Moore, are you two related? They're not related. But it's gotten to the point where Herman Moore says, I, I call Sean cousin, just so, so people won't ask him anymore. But there he is, Sean Moore. Terrific quarterback out today with a shoulder bruise that happened late last week in a win against William & Mary. He was hit actually by coach Joe Gibbs, the Washington Redskins. His son, playing for William & Mary, hit him on a clean hit, but bruised his shoulder. Sean Moore has not played. London to Greggs. Good yardage. He has a first down, a gain of 11. And again, the draw play. On this drive, they've run two draw plays with success. And then they've come back and tried to throw the ball. Again, watch the guards here of Virginia, Brown and Riles, as they kind of come in and kind of cross block and make some plays. And that's what you need. They just step around one another, let the defense come up field, and then Greg's number 40 does a nice job of reading their blocks and picking up the first. From the 42, Greg's gets the carry again. And he gets right to the 50. John Johnson with the tackle. Grabbed him by the ankle. On defense! Now the favorite color here at Death Valley is orange. Yes, Virginia has the orange pants on today as well. This is Death Valley, home of the Tigers. And a shootout today, ACC style with Virginia. 240 left in the third quarter. Clemson leading 24-17. A reverse. Looked like he was thinking pass. It was Brian Satola, the third team quarterback. He tucks it under and runs to the Clemson 45-yard line. Again, trying to come up with any type of big play through uh, some, some trick plays. Again, they've come up with play action passes. And Brian Satola, who is the third team quarterback, lined up at wide receiver. He was trying to get the ball to Tim Finkelston, but he was well covered. Picked up the first down from the Clemson 45. Bryant and Greggs, the backs. London fakes, throws, and he's entered. No, almost intercepted. Dexter Davis looked up to see the other end zone. He knew where he was headed. And that was good night, Irene. Dexter Davis, overthrown there by Blunt, but Davis should have had that one. And Davis has been a major contributor to this team since he stepped onto the campus a year ago. They fake the draw play this time. That time the linebackers stay in, but real good coverage. The ball was overthrown. Two guys around the player he was trying to throw it to, and then Davis should have had the interception. But they compare him favorably, Jim, with Wolfer. Donnell Wolfer, who was here last year as the number one draft pick of the Bears. Dexter says Wolfer's his idol. Dexter dropped. He actually made two interceptions last week against Duke and then fumbled them back to the Blue Devils. 
Second down pass play behind Finkelstein incomplete. Wayne Simmons in on the rush against London. What a nice rush by Simmons, too. He just bull rushed over a guy and ran right through him to put some pressure on London. Now, again, what, they ha what Virginia has not done the second half is come back to the tight end. Gonagol was such a factor in the first half, but he has not been called on here in the second half. He had four receptions in the first half. Has not been thrown to here in the second half. 3rd and 10, Virginia from the Clemson 45. Bryant and Greggs in the backfield. But good time. The pass is caught. And a good catch by Derek Dooley. He is the son of Vince Dooley, the former great Georgia coach. Now, and another walk-on Derek Dooley is, but he's earned a, a place on this squad. And George Wilson, we have got to give him a chance to play more. This comes out and practice hards every week. Said he deserves it. He got the playing time, comes up with a big catch. I've got a lot of famous fathers on this team. The son's playing here, Bill Curry Jr., you see the list. First down run by Greggs. Gain of a couple. Brewster on the tackle for Clemson. Well, Jim, this has been the best drive that Virginia really has had all day. They've been able to mix, finally, some runs in. George Walsh told John Dockery that he was going to try some different things in the running game, and what that's been have been draw plays. And the mixture of the draw plays to primarily the fullback, Griggs, and the passes have been the difference in this drive. This is the 11th play of the drive, Pat. Herman Moore to the left, Finkelston to the right. McGonagall, the tight end, in tight on the right side. There goes Finkelston in motion on second and six. London. Should have been intercepted. Brewster. That is two now on this drive that Clemson let get away. You know, it's really remarkable. Clemson came into the game with ten interceptions, have two today, and really have dropped two others. Now, London is really throwing to some guys who are pretty well covered. That ball was thrown behind, actually, Finkelson, who was running the crossing route. I think Brewster was absolutely surprised. That's, that's two balls, really, that should have been picked off. Again, the one by Dexter. Dexter Davis could have been returned for a touchdown. Third down play. Third and six for Virginia from the Clemson 25. Johnny Wilson in, along with Derek Dooley. Setting it up, swinging it over to Bryant. He is short of the first down. Bodine and Brewster make the tackle, and it's fourth down for Virginia. Well, and that shows you what team speed does, because that play looked like it had big play written all over it. It was done, Bryant ran the little screen play, but then all of a sudden, great see four or five orange jerseys were around Bryant, stopping him short. McInerney in for the field goal attempt. One for one today. This is a 39-yarder. You know, he was only two for two, or two for five, starting the day for the year. And now he has nailed both of his attempts today. McInerney turns it within four. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, Clemson 24, Virginia 20. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Radio Shack, the technology store, America's leader in consumer electronics. UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. And by Toyota, whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? We start the fourth quarter in Clemson at Death Valley. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. And to this point, total yards, Clemson with an edge. Gardaki has missed a couple of field goals. And Terry Allen, their star running back, out with a knee injury. However, Virginia started today with a bunch of injuries, a whole rash of injuries. Scoring summary, Virginia got the first touchdown. Henderson came back and matched him. Clemson then went up 10 on a touchdown to Cooper. 17-10 at halftime. And then right 
at the start of the second half. Moore on a long touchdown. That came Morocco, and now a field goal on the last play of the third quarter. Makes it 24-20. Clemson taking the kick. It's Henderson to the 22-yard line. And this has been a, a very close ball game, but both offenses have gone about it primarily in different ways. Clemson has had some very nice drives, really control the, have controlled the clock, whereas Virginia has come up with some big plays in the passing game. And the quarterback, Matt Blunden for Virginia, who's filling in for Sean Moore, who was injured a week ago, I think has done a nice job, Jim. 201 yards, two touchdowns. He has. He has stepped in today. He's been poised, very poised. Morocco. Looking long for Fletcher. Let him a little too much. Just a bit too much. Hey, we've got an update. Let's take you back to New York with Greg Gumbel. Jim, Miami quarterback Gino Toretto starting in place of the injured Craig Erickson. His second TD pass of the day, 15 yards to Randy Bethel. Miami leads Cincinnati. And top-ranked Notre Dame has just gone ahead of Stanford 7-6 in the second quarter. Back to Death Valley. Boy, everyone who plays quarterback at Miami, they just come out firing and keep on getting those touchdowns. Yeah, a lot of it really is the system and the attitude. They have a philosophy about throwing, and anybody can, can do it well. Ahead. Working again today. Second and 10, Henderson decides to go outside. He is wrapped up by Jason Wallace. The fly, they call him. <laughs> and a good tackle there. We take it to John Dockery. Thank you, Jim Nance. I'm with the uh, Clemson legend, Frank Howard. And, Frank, you're the man responsible for the rock. How did it come about? Well, I tell you, a fellow named Jones brought me that rock from Death Valley. I put it out there and told all my boys when they going to give 110%, they could rub my rock. If they wasn't going to give 110% to keep the hands off. And that's how the rock came by. <laughs> it certainly has worked. Back to you, Jim. Jim, you think, does he sound like a coach or not? He really does. <laughs> 80 years old, going into the Hall of Fame. Morocco. Pass, caught, it's Fields, second effort, picks up the first down. 14 yards, Stacy Fields to the 37-yard line. Well, we talked earlier about Stacy Stacey Fields being uncomfortable catching the ball, but he is getting more and more comfortable, and that's time with tremendous second effort. As Tyrone Lewis tried to slip, strip the ball from him. So this is a kind of a funny throw by Morocco, finds his third receiver, that is Fields. And then number nine, Lewis tries to really strip the ball from Fields, and that's why he broke the tackle. Clemson's converted on its last seven third down drives. Stacy Fields gets the credit for that one. Playing at Frank Howard Field. We just saw the legendary coach. Henderson tripped up. Just a short game, maybe even just back to the line of scrimmage. Phil Thomas with the tackle. You know, this defense of Virginia has been on the field a long time because their offense has come up with big plays primarily. And then you get tired, come around the fourth quarter, 1340 left in the in the game. And generally it doesn't take quite as much effort to play in the offensive lines as it does defensively. So they need to stop them here, force a punt, and give their offense a chance. It's second down and ten. Chris Morocco, the quarterback, throwing to Fletcher. Another first down for Clemson, a gain of eleven. Yeah, Rodney Fletcher does a great job of setting defensive backs up. He'll come down and block you, block you, block you, and then when he's going to catch a route, he does pretty much the same thing. You think that he's going to block the defensive corner, then he slips right behind you, and then the ball is drilled by Morocco. Grew up in this area, in Georgia, and then went out to California to play junior college football at Taft, where he was the quarterback, recruited back here, and got shifted to wide receiver. Inside handoff to McFadden. Gain of three. 12.55 left in the game. Clemson 24, Virginia 20. Each team four and one on the year. This game has a large bearing on who will reign this year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. You know, it's in a conference, I think, Jim, the ACC, that is more competitive this year than it has been in a long time. North Carolina State, Virginia, and Clemson, all with legitimate chances of winning it. Second and seven, a mix-up. Morocco still gets the pitch. Davis still looking for it. That's Charlie James, actually. The James, yes, James fell on it. Mix up right from the start. 
Clemson's fortunate not to have turned it over. Loss of five. What Dan, Danny Ford said is we need to throw the ball more coming in in today's game. And they have thrown the ball 20 times with great success. Virginia to 23, but the time of possession, they've run 70 plays. And generally, Clemson, with their style of offense, runs maybe 10, 12 plays more than most offensive teams around the country. Third down play, third and 12. Morocco lobs it over everyone's head, incomplete. The Tigers will have to punt. Intended for Gary Cooper. Well, again, this Virginia defense did their job, forcing the punt, keeping the long drive away from the Clemson offense, which they've done so well this year. We talked about famous fathers on the Virginia side. Morocco's father, Zippy, is in the University of Georgia Hall of Fame. Great football player, basketball player for the Bulldogs. Gardaki's punt. Fair catch called by Finkelston at the 14-yard line. So, Virginia has the football. Chance to drive and take the lead in the final quarter at Death Valley. You're looking at Vance Hammond, starting defensive tackle for Clemson. He goes way back with the Tigers here at Death Valley. Oh, boy, Diddy had the job. And you go to, the, I think it was like gate 11 or something, and uh, they had a big old sheet with all the Highway Patrolman's uh, sons on there. And you look down at the sheet and say, Vance Hammond, they say, all right, come on in. And they mark your name off, and uh, you get a place on the hill. And uh, what was really neat is what after the team would run down, they'd roll up the carpet. And what we'd always do when we was real young, we'd get on the top of the hill, and after they went down, we'd roll on our side as far as we could and wherever we stopped where we set for the game. <laughs> now there's his father still working on the sidelines. Mr. Hammond, South Carolina Highway Patrolman, helps out here at Clemson. Crowd control at the home games. Mrs. Hammond comes down from Spartanburg. She's in the stands. Vance is alternating. He'll be back in there in a minute. Tallest defensive lineman in Clemson history at six foot seven. First and 10, Virginia, from its own 15. And it's Fisher for a short game. Chester McLaughlin, freshman from North Carolina, makes the tackle. Big expectations for McLaughlin here. Well, there's big expectations for him because he's one of those guys who's got great size, 6'4", and nearly 300 pounds, but real light on his feet. Can make an awful lot of plays and expecting a lot from him over the next four years. That six foot four frame, about 300 pounds, McLaughlin. Second and nine for Virginia. Greggs. He'll set up third and four as he gets just across the 20 to the 21. Simmons on the tackle. Very important third down here for the Cavalier offense. In third and four situation. In the past, they've gone to their tight end, McGonagall. In the first half, he was very much a factor, catching four balls. They have not thrown to him yet here in the second half. McGonagall lines up on the right side as the tight end. Finkelston, top of your screen. Herman Moore, wide left. Third and four, pass play almost picked off. James Lott dashing in, trying to make a leap for it. Punting time for Virginia. Myron Martin is the punter. Remember, Clemson has three block punts on the year. Timeout was called before the snap. Clemson called the timeout. Ten minutes, 15 seconds left in the game. Clemson leading by four. The reason for the timeout was because there were 12 men on the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the 12th was back here. And they called timeout because the penalty would have given Virginia a first down. So a heads-up play by the Clemson coaches. Now there is the punt blocker, Mitch Belton, walk-on for Clemson, another walk-on making a major contribution. He has blocked three punts this year, and he is up now poised to do so again. They think they can get one from the Cavaliers. 
two in the same quarter against Maryland. No rush, but not a good kick. Favorable Virginia bounce, but it still rolls only to the 44-yard line, a 24-yard kick. Tomorrow, we have a doubleheader coming your way. NFL action, Giants and Eagles early. Most of you will see that. Others will watch the Bears and Bucks. Cowboys back at Lambeau Field. Or Detroit, Minnesota. Late, most of you will get San Francisco and the Saints. Others, Phoenix, Washington, Atlanta Rams. All get started, don't forget, 12.30 Eastern time, the NFL Today. Herb, Dick, Brent, Will McDonough. First and 10, Clemson. McFadden for a yard. You know, Jim, even though Clemson didn't block that punt there, I think Virginia was just so concerned about it, it was nearly as good a, a, as one as uh, Martin got off a very, very short punt. You get so concerned back there about the rush and not getting it blocked, sometimes you forget the fundamentals of punting the ball. 24-yard kick indeed sets Clemson up in excellent field position, leading by four. 9.35 left in the game, clock is running. Second down and nine. Morocco fakes into the line. Now looking long for Cooper. Changes his shoulder. Touchdown, Clemson. Day. This one 43 yards. And he's put Clemson up by two scores. Gardaki can make it 11. It is an 11 point margin at the moment. Even the mascots had to get out of the way of this one. But what I liked about this throw by Morocco, he gave it plenty of air for Gary Cooper to run under. A lot of guys will throw it a little bit too low. There goes the Cavalier. Gave it plenty of air for Gary Cooper to run under again at the end zone. That was a nice throw by Morocco. can lull you to sleep running the football running the football and then they run the option play and then off the play action fake you're going to see gary cooper the wide receiver come down the corner there goes to the play action fake he comes up the free safety goes too flat and gary cooper just outruns him the ball well thrown plenty of air on it to get underneath but it's set up by running the option play four, five, six times in a row, you get those defensive backs thinking about support, and the next thing you know, Gary Cooper's behind him. I like that Gary Cooper. He's a very savvy receiver and comes up with a big play. I believe that's now 12 plays over 40 yards in the last year for Cooper. He just waited for that one and scores the second touchdown of the day. But how about the afternoon for Chris Morocco? He's 14 of 21, 210 yards, and two touchdowns. It's his career day. He also ran for a score. Gardaki's boot almost through the end zone. Finkelston feels it at the back of the end zone. Bringing it out to the 20. Clemson in pursuit of a fourth straight ACC championship. It would be unprecedented. You see the other ones with three in a row. Duke, Clemson, and Maryland. Virginia has never won the ACC. Now, Virginia still has plenty of time. 925 down by 11, but they're not going to be able to fool this Clemson defensive backs now because with this kind of lead, they know they have to throw it, so they're going to have to earn everything they get. 925 left. First and 10. London looking pass all the way. There's McGonagall. Tell you, tough five-yard pickup right across the middle. Elsewhere in the ACC, North Carolina State, you know, the Wolfpack, Coach Sheridan, unbeaten. Duke, after the win against Clemson, beats Army today. 
Wake's first win against North Carolina. And Bobby Ross gets his first victory in the ACC while at Georgia Tech. Second and five. Delay. Fumble. London gets it. It was Greggs on the carry. The ball was literally popped loose, jarred loose. Well, and, you know, you think in a situation like this, too, a draw play would be a great call. They're down by 11 points, and it should be wide open. But again, it told you what the kind of speed this defense has. And again, the nose tackle, I think, was the first one, number 97, Davis, who got in there. And then it was 91 or 81, Otis Moore, who made the play. Third down and 10. Under the rush. London goes down. LeVon Kirkland. An 11-yard loss. Kirkland registers Clemson's first sack of the day. And drops two guys back off the rush line, setting up a return. Martin's kick, better than the last one. Locked from his 44. Goes backwards. Lock trying to get on that right corner, didn't make it. 35-yard punt, a loss of seven on the return. LaVon Kirkland, number 44. When you are in third and ten situation and don't get him on the line of scrimmage, he is going to make plays like that. Three orange jerseys around Matt London. Nowhere to go. Back at Clemson on a beautiful day. And the Tigers lead it by 11. They've changed quarterbacks for this series. Deshaun Cameron replaces Chris Morocco. Possession starts at midfield. Cameron will run the option and keep it. Picks up nine. Kevin Cook on the tackle. Ball is at the Virginia 41-yard line. Deshaun Cameron has got some very nice foot speed, but he followed a nice block by his fullback, McFadden, who just chopped his man. And Cameron had the presence just to cut in right behind that block. But he's got a big and accurate arm as well. And a very confident young man. He thinks he can play and play very well this year. He does indeed. He says, I will not rest until I'm the number one quarterback. He rooms on the road with Morocco. They get along fine, the two QBs. Here's Henderson. Henderson, oh, he had a chance to go all the way. Looked as though he tripped over Gary Cooper, his own man trying to hurdle over Gary Cooper. Got his legs tied up. But the ball is down at the 21-yard line of Virginia. But again, Gary Cooper, number 25, who's caught two touchdown, two touchdown passes. You're going to see him try to throw the block that's going to throw Joe Henderson. They call it the stock block. Knocks his man down and then gets up. Otherwise, he scores. If he kick, just stays on the ground, it's a touchdown. Kick Cooper right in the head. Not intentionally, of course. First and ten. Pitch to James. Maybe a one-yard gain. Give him two at the 20. We've got an update. Let's send you back to New York for the story from Greg Gumbel. Jim, former Cleveland Browns head coach Sam Ritigliano, now heading up Liberty College, looks on as his team takes on Eastern Illinois. 36 seconds left. Jason Harrell, 34 yards out, hits the field goal. Liberty goes to 4-0 with a 9-7 win. All right, Greg. Sam Ritigliano is always a guy I love to... Love to talk to. Great guy with the Cleveland Browns. Second down and eight. From the 19-yard line. Cameron comes to the line. Calls a timeout. Clemson's left with one. We have 541 left in the game. Clemson leading 31-20. It is now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to team players who have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the area of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Stacy Fields from Clemson. Stacy is an industrial engineering major from Frogmore, South Carolina. And from Virginia, Kevin Cook. 
Kevin is an English major, English language and literature major from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Toyota donates a check for $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Congratulations to each of those players. Michigan State in a close one over Iowa. The team that's coming back now, Florida State. You could just, yep. you, you yep. knew it was going to happen too after opening up with a loss against Southern Mississippi and then Clemson. Well, Bobby Bowden's just too good a coach, I think, to let his team yep. get down. Went out to LSU, won at Baton Rouge. Second down, Carrie Henderson jumping around, looking for some room, gets to the 16 yard line. Pearson on the tackle, James Pearson. Clemson trying to keep intact its perfect record against the Cavaliers. This is the 29th meeting. Clemson has never lost. Flying the big tiger paw around here. Well, this is such a classic Clemson type of game, Jim. They come up with some big plays on defense and special teams, and they lull you to sleep on offense, come up with some big plays in the passing game. Third down and five, Henderson. Getting to the outside, sidestepping his way, looking for the first down. I believe, yes, he will have it. He, he really has some very light feet, doesn't he? I like him. I think yeah. he's a terrific runner. He, one time as a youngster, was featured in Sports Illustrated's faces in the crowd. Now he's really standing out in a crowd today. Henderson with 14 rushes. He goes over 100 yards with that carry and a touchdown. Well, I'll tell you, when they have Terry Allen healthy, they got Hal Allen and Henderson, who's a different kind of back, and then Charlie James, the fastest back they have. First down play. Cameron Keeps still on his feet to the three. Well, Clemson has always had a lot of very good second-team guys because they play them a lot. It's part of their, their philosophy of playing a lot of people on both offense and defense. So there isn't much of a drop-off when somebody gets hurt. But Clemson just using up the clock and driving in with the touchdown that would put this game away. 425, as you see in the lower portion. Left. There's Terry Allen. Hope everybody's enjoying the game. <laughs> we are. Henderson to the two. Joe Henderson from Freehold, New Jersey. You know, Jim, as you watch this pretty perfe uh, impressive performance, I think, by this Clemson team today, you have to think what would have happened had they not lost a week ago. Of course, they still have some tough games ahead of them, including North Carolina State here in Death Valley. But an opportunity to play, perhaps, for some national honors. A couple of weeks away from playing North Carolina State. Now, third down. Third down for Clemson. Henderson, the tailback. The give inside McFadden. He is not near the goal line. About two yards short. There were some defensive linemen for Virginia who are going to spend a lot of time tomorrow in the Whirlpool, believe me. From the one, it's fourth down. Fourth and one. And instead of going for the field goal that would make the difference 14. Danny Forrest says, hey, let's go ahead and try to push it across. You know, and the reason 14, he's still thinking perhaps that Virginia might be able to score with, with three minutes left and beat him with two touchdowns, but that's got to be his thinking. McFadden to full back, flags are down. Play was whistled dead. And now it looks like they're going to bring on guard down. Delay of game, yep. offense, fourth yep. down. The penalty brings out onto the field, Gardaki. This is a guy who hadn't had to punt much today, but can both punt and kick for the Tigers. And I, I think really perhaps their most valuable player because they're going to play a lot of close type of ball games the way they play offense. It's a 22-yard try. He comes from the same high school that delivered Kevin Butler to Georgia. Terrific kicker, the Bears, Gardaki's kick, it's good. 
second field goal of the day for Gardaki. Clemson leads at 34-20. Spirit weekend at Clemson. Troy's color here at Clemson was not always orange. At one time, school color here was gold. Jess Neely was the coach, legendary old coach. Uniforms, though, one season got so faded by the end of the year, he said, we've got to get another color uniform. So he switched it to orange. Have you ever seen, Look what he started. Yep. Have you ever seen as many women get outfits to match orange in your life? <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. Have you seen as many people paint paws on their face? <laughs> Holding up the banner, looking for that streak to continue to 29 in a row. We've got a banner night coming your way on CBS. Paradise, followed by Tour of Duty. And then at 10 p.m. Eastern, it's Saturday night with Connie Chung. Marlon Brando gives his first interview in 16 years. How long has it been since you gave an interview? Nobody's asked in 16 <laughs> years, but I'd uh, <laughs> be happy to give one. Okay. <laughs> As the cannon goes off, Virginia unable to return him today. The kick's just too deep, too strong. Let's get a sideline report from a man on the field, John Dockery. John? You know, Jim Nance, if you look down the Virginia bench here, it probably says it all. You see they're tired, they seem beaten, and it's just because Clemson keeps coming at you with fresh players, especially in the defensive line, where they use a lot of people just so they're fresh late in the game. It happened on the last Virginia drive where they sacked the quarterback, London, and right now it's all Clemson. They're just too deep and too talented for Virginia. Now back to you. All right, Doc, down two touchdowns. We've seen Blunden go long with success today. 2.50 left in the contest. Now the pressure throwing incomplete. Incomplete. He had a man on him, Chester McLaughlin. Now I have to give this uh, Clemson defense and Bill Oliver, Oliver, their coordinator, a lot of credit because they prepared all week to see Sean Moore, a much different quarterback than, than Matt Blunden, the guy who can really run and get pressure on the defense. But nonetheless, they did a remarkable job of adjusting. Aren't you glad he is the mascot for Houston? <laughs> That's a tiring job for a mascot, isn't it? Blunden, past the line of scrimmage, fumbles out of bounds. He is hit hard. Ashley Shepard, I think given all circumstances here. Matt Blunden did quite well today. He was thrown into quarterback role this week. Here's a guy who missed spring practice because Virginia made it to the final eight in the NCAA basketball tournament. Again, if you just joined us late, Matt Blunden is a starter on the basketball team. Kind of ironic that he, uh, as the offensive quarterback of this team, he was the player of the year on defense for the basketball team. Kind of uh, two different personalities. Basketball, he's a tough, aggressive, defensive player. Really did a good job on Stacey King, by the way, in the tournament. London's pass to Moore, complete for a first down and out of bounds. London held King to just a field goal in the first half in Virginia's upset win over Oklahoma in the tournament. He was here this summer, Matt Blunden, visiting Clemson. He played on an ACC All-Star team that went over to Greece, basketball team that toured Greece. The coach was Cliff Ellis, the basketball coach at Clemson, so he brought the ranks in here at first to train at Clemson. Actually walked onto the playing field and through the stands at Clemson and dreamed about coming back here as a football player. Now he'll go down. Wayne Simmons, freshman from Hilton Head. The second sack of the day, an 11-yard loss. Well, as John Dockery said, not only are those guys fresh, but guys like Wayne Simmons can really play. Just a freshman, too. You know, you look at the 22 players, you take the two deeps on Clemson's defense, 13 of the 22 are freshmen or sophomores. It's going to be a very strong team, not only this year, but in the next two years as well. Second and 21. London getting flushed out. Sides to heave it long. Incomplete. To jump ball for a moment. Eric Jeter helped bat it down for the Clemson defenders. 143 left. 
the ACC champion, two of every three years, goes to the Florida Citrus Bowl. This is a year where the Citrus Bowl was not committed to taking the ACC champion. I think they're just going to wait and see how that plays out, Jim. North right. Carolina State is one of those teams that's undefeated at the moment. Kind of an exciting team, well coached by Dick Sheridan, exciting quarterback and Shane Montgomery. Third and 21, London has a man open. It's Derek Dooley, sidesteps one defender, gets to the 35. That's nine yards short of a first. No, Derek, of 13. Excuse me, Jim. Derek Dooley and, and uh, Chris Morocco are our best of friends. Actually spoke this week on the phone. They went to grade school together, and they were lying, about, lying to each other about what they were going to try to do <laughs> today, but they did speak this week on the phone. Played catch since the first grade. There's Dooley. Makes the reception as he, well, he's right at the first down yardage at the 43. May need a spot. And like every good coach's son, he's arguing with the official there, saying that he went the proper distance and made the catch for the first down. We'll bring the chains across. There's his longtime buddy, Morocco. What a great day for, for Chris. He waited so long for this kind of an afternoon and having fun in his fifth yeah. year. Already, again, has graduated, taking graduate courses at Clemson. As it should be. As it should be. A guy who was discouraged early on in his career here and actually quit, left Clemson. Said it was a very difficult decision leaving, but then he had a very difficult decision in coming back. Danny Ford made him work his way back as the Cavaliers pick up the first down, but work his way back on the team and finally waited around his fifth year, gets his moment in, in the sun. He said he knew how tough Virginia would be just from all the rhetoric from during the summer from Derek Dooley. And it wasn't easy today for Clemson. This was a four-point game going into the final quarter, 24-20. That was a first down for Virginia by just an inch. Just a minute left. Pass at midfield. Incomplete. They say McGonagall trapped it. Well, I'll tell you, I still like the way Bruce McGonigal has played at tight end. It was much more of a factor in the first half, but I'll tell you, he, he's not one of those average tight ends. He'll block the linebacker in front of him. He can double team down, and he's got the speed to get deep. A lot of college tight ends only run those six-yard routes, but not Bruce McGonigal. What a smart play, though. You look back at that touchdown in the first quarter. It was the trailer on the pass play to Herman Moore was there for the deflection. This is over the head of Herman Moore. James Lott coming in in a hurry. Along with Dexter Davis. Third and ten coming up for Virginia. One minute exactly left in the game. Hey, tonight, some ranked teams in action. Georgia at Tennessee. We saw the Volunteers yeah. last week looking strong. What a stretch they have, though. After tonight against Georgia, it's Alabama, then LSU. Arkansas. Well... What a loss today by A&M. Now, Arkansas already was the preseason choice in that conference, but it's opened up even more for the Razorbacks. Ooh. Ooh. Boy, a hit put on Derek Dooley. Mm. The incompletion. Arlington Nunn came in. Make sure he would hear those footsteps. Bill Oliver calls Arlington Nunn a small little Clydesdale. <laughs> he plays like that. He's only 185 pounds, but a hit you like he weighs 230, 240. That doesn't mean he drives a beer truck in the summer, does it? <laughs> Absolutely not. He'll hit you like one, though. Another one of these guys on the Clemson team that gets the most out of his ability week after week. High school teammate with linebacker Vince Taylor, his teammate. Fourth down play. McGonagall hit. Makes the reception at the Clemson 48. And again, this is close to the first down. I think he might be a bit short. Spot it at the 48. Again, they'll bring the chains out. This was a fourth down pass play. Looking ahead to this Virginia schedule, they hope they can get some people healthy, Jim. That's the most important thing. They need to get Marcus Wilson and Terry Kirby, their tailbacks back, and of course, Sean Moore, their starting quarterback, although London's played well today. But they play North Carolina next, and then Wake Forest and Louisville the next three weeks. Well, that'll do it. And that's coming up just short of the first down. Clemson will come out and snap the football. 
You look back, though, the timeout called, oddly enough, when Virginia was punting, 24-20. Clemson had 12 men on the field. Tigers alert to that, called a timeout to avoid the penalty that would give them Virginia the first down. Now some razzle-dazzle. James runs it out to midfield. The quarterback on that play was Jim McLeese. I don't know why they're putting the football up in the air like that. <laughs> Pitching it about five yards back. But I was getting back to that point. Clemson calls a timeout. Kind of rattles the kicker, perhaps. Only yep. a 24-yard punt, knowing Clemson's ability to block punts. And just two plays later, touchdown to Gary Cooper. Yeah, it's those small things, Jim, that add up in the course of a ball game in the difference between wins and losses, believe me. James down at the 46-yard line, probably the final play of the game. Clemson will go to 5-1 and one on the year, rebounding from its loss against Duke a year ago. And a streak, it only continues for George Welch and the Virginia Cavaliers. 29 straight times without a loss. Clemson over Virginia. And we join John Dockery with Danny Ford. Danny, what kind of problems did the switching quarterback for them uh, give to you? Well, we found out about it kind of late, of course. And uh, Sean Moore is an excellent quarterback, more option quarterback than, than Bunland. Uh, he's a nice big kid. I saw him play basketball against us last year, and he really threw the ball well. They said he had a great week of practice up there. And uh, Coach Wells wanted to keep Moore out for later on down the road. But I, th I thought their quarterback did a great job with one week work. Now, I know you got to feel a lot better this week. You have the loss last week to do. I know you were down this week. The team in tents up, played as well as you thought they could. We're a long way off. Uh, we're not. We're, we, we gave up too many plays, long plays. We we fumbled today for the first time. Us, you know, made a lot of mistakes. A long way from being where we were. We were a better football team several weeks ago than we are now. What's the problem? We got to get. We got to get 22 playing together. I believe. I, I Plays good, then defense left down. Defense plays good in the offense. I'll go. Got a lot of work to do. Well, at least you got more of a balanced attack today. Congratulations again, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate y'all being here. Jim Nance, take care. Take it to you. All right, Doc, thank you. Clemson pulling away. It was 24-20 going into the fourth quarter. The Tigers put 10 points on the board in the final stanza to win it by 14. Now 5-1 and one on the year, while Virginia drops to 4-2. and two. Now we send you back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Jim, thank you. So the Clemson Tigers rebound. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Let's run down some scores for you, beginning with Major League Baseball, where the Oakland Athletics have taken a three games to one lead in the American League Championship Series with a 6-5 to five victory over the Toronto Blue Jays, Game 5 tomorrow. Now to football. Top-ranked Notre Dame leading Stanford. That game is at halftime, 14-6. Second-ranked Miami all over Cincinnati. That game has moved to the third quarter. Gino Toretta, three touchdown passes on the day. Colorado leads Missouri big in the fourth quarter. 42-3 is the score there. Darian Hagan, three touchdown score today. Fourth ranked Nebraska in the fourth quarter, 58-7 over Kansas State. Michigan defeated Wisconsin by a score of 24 to nothing. Wisconsin only 97 yards of total offense today. Pittsburgh over Temple, 27-3. Temple coach Jerry Burnt, a personal 24-game losing streak now. Southern Cal, after its 600th win, trailing Washington in Los Angeles, 10-7 in the third quarter. Virginia Virginia Tech, a 12 to 10 upset winner over West Virginia today. Virginia Tech had not won in Morgantown since 1967 when its coach Frank Beamer was a starting cornerback. We'll take a timeout and we'll come back to New York as the Prudential College Football Report continues in just a moment. 